I love to see the towns passing by and arrive these rails neath God's blue sky. Let me travel this land from the mountains to the sea, cause that's the life I believe. And when I'm gone and at my grave you stand, say God called home your rambling man. Welcome to Ramble Man Podcast, episode number 105. This one's with Ashley Aranda, and she's a craft maker that goes by the name Papyrosaurus. Really appreciate her for being on. She's very enthusiastic. And uh, the only issue we have is the two of us kind of talking over one another and my mic winning out. So I apologize to her and to the listener for that. But there's still so much greatness on this. It's If you'd like to find more out, about Ashley's business, you can go to her website at papyrosaurus.com. That's P-A-P-Y-R-U-S-A-U-R-U-S.com. Also, that's her handle on Instagram. If you want to give her a follow there and tell her Rambo Man sent you. We appreciate her for being on. Sponsor this week is Feral John. Feral John is a graphic design, illustration, and social media consultation company based here in Knoxville, Tennessee. So they do work for clients big and small all over the country, all over the globe, in fact. But they also do photography, videography, video editing, and audio editing, website design, SEO, writing, content development, Hell, they'll babysit your kids if it nets them money. So make sure you give them a follow on social media on either Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn at at Feral Giant. And be sure to give them an email today and hire them for your next project. Without much further ado, here's the episode. Got it. (laughs) Well, the funniest is, is I make the window smaller so I can read my notes. And I'm like... Uh, shouldn't record be like one of the main buttons. Of the, I, I don't need the reactions. I don't no. need the apps. I need, I need the record button. That's an important that would be the main feature, but it's not. Oh my God. Zoom. You still ain't <laughs> figured this shit out. Uh, no. I want to record because I need to know how to pronounce <laughs> it. Can I take a run at it and see if Please I can do it right? all ears. Go ahead. Pa- Papyrosaurus. Holy shit. I did it. not realize it was papyrus until I was typing it out and autocorrect pulled up. as like, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and dinosaur. I, yeah. I kept calling it a uh, papyrosaurus or something to Hannah. I've got, I've got people say uh, like papaya saurus. It's not even in there. What are you doing? I feel like you need to make a shirt or something that has all those variations. Papasaurus. I should. Yes. Uh, I had a one um, like event organizer that insisted on pronouncing it Papiosaurus. Papiosaurus. Ooh. Like yeah, I'm filled with grandpas. Yeah. Oh, that seems like it's got the little the glasses with the little thing on it. I corrected her so many times and she could not get it. It was forever Papiosaurus. Oh my God. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Serendipity? Yes. Okay. So uh, it is one of my favorite films. I know it's not a great film, but it, it, it I've seen it. No, here's, here's borderline. Here's issues. I've probably seen it over a hundred times. That's fine. Okay. I said that to my cousin-in-law and he started judging me hardcore. I was like, no, it's like an hour and 28 minutes. You can play it in the background. It has a great yes. soundtrack. You don't have to focus on it. But I'm going to watch it again later today. I haven't awesome. watched it probably a year. But so, but I think about the scene where they're sitting there, talk, because I've seen over a hundred times where he's like, Mr. Mignon, it, it's Mignon. And he's like, Mignon. 
Right, Mr. Minion. And he yeah. just goes in and you see the guy <laughs> just go, damn it. Damn it, yeah. <laughs> That's you yeah. and the wedding planner. It's just like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> and, and, and I look through everything. What is your name? Well, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, okay. Yeah. Uh, and I will make sure I per spell everything correctly. That's right. with, with an E. And a Y. Yeah. Okay. okay. E-Y. But the normal people okay. spelling. Of actually the non-obnoxious version. Yeah. And last yeah. name? Is Aranda. Oh, it, it, it is what is in the, the Zoom. Okay. Yes. Is, I don't know what the hell it says. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's I wasn't sure if that was a middle name or a last name. That's that could oh, go. With... I mean, it is Amanda with an R, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it's that good to meet you. Out. Well, good podcasting. Uh, I'll see you later. Uh, right. <laughs> and, we, and we are done. And, and uh, so I'm, I, I'm noticing that my microphone is overpowering you. So there may be times where I just set back and let you talk uh, All right. so I don't interrupt. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think to grab the fancy microphone that we have <laughs> somewhere upstairs. Okay. No, I have one, so. Uh, and this is, uh, <clears throat> shoot, now I'm going to have to cut out all that quality serendipity talk. No, it's great. Uh, we can just discuss like 90s rom-coms if you want to all day, that's fine. I, actually, I'm going to leave this in. So I haven't <laughs> given you the rules yet of the podcast this should okay. become a drinking game for anybody who listens when i mention the rules right. on the podcast and it all the rules are spoiler alert for anybody at home is uh you can curse if you want to that, that was my only question is okay. can i curse? all right great we're set no i'm gonna talk no we're we're here for me to talk to you about jesus the sweet, the sweet baby jesus oh shit <laughs> hey hey that's that's <laughs> <laughs> literally cursed you just oh, cursed no. again uh I, i'm doing my dad finger the um uh, mormons you, are getting real tricky <laughs> if you if you want me to cut anything out later please feel free okay. i will not give my example here because my example throws one of my friends under the bus oh, no. I, can't, I can't do that to her and i even made fun of her when I recorded last night, because the thing she fussed about, she posted to Instagram this weekend. I was like, ha, 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 I've got a minute and a half recording of you going off on that, and you're doing it. Huh. Interesting. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, don't use one word where a sentence, where a paragraph will suffice. Wait. Hey, man, you just did it. You said great. Come on. Okay. That was a, that was that was a dramatic pause. <laughs> that was a that was a Craig. That will Ferg not be a problem okay. at all. <laughs> that was a Craig Ferguson awkward pause. Is yes. what it was. Yes, okay. it is very much. So, uh, I I am going to pre-apologize and say I've sent like eighteen people messages and I can't remember who is who is whom. I've got That's my okay. notes. Are you in Cleveland or you're in Rhode Island? I'm in Long Island. Damn it. I was it's so fine. It's an island. I was so close. So I would close. prefer Rhode Island, but here we are. So Okay. You're in Long Island. Yes. So do, so do you so here's a million dollars. Do you have any connections to Cleveland and Hannah? Yes. Okay, good. Thank God. I'm We're, originally from the Midwest, yeah. Okay. Where are I'm you? Like, oh. I, yeah, I, very, I was very big in the Cleveland like maker scene doing okay. Cleveland Bazaar. Okay um once mistakenly doing the cleveland flea and all the other <laughs> shows out there actually i'm coming back in december to do uh the cleveland bazaars winter show I, I would make fun of you for coming back in december of all times but you're in long island so one one or the other fine but, it's fine <laughs> so, I, I i am in knoxville tennessee so uh, as of right now, I would gladly take Cleveland in December over 95 degrees and 95% humidity. Yeah, it, it gets sweaty out here like that too because ocean. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did y'all get hit by the storm by Ida? Um, no. we did, but where we're at, we are just enough inland that okay. it just knocked my sunflowers over. 
and it wasn't. Oh my god. Uh, rainy, we, but my plants liked it, so it was fine. But yeah, t- towards the coast, obviously there was a lot of flooding and. Right. Yeah. It well, got, and it's it kind of wild because a friend lives in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. And so originally I was like, are you going to be okay during this? He's like, yeah. And then the next day he texted me. He's like, you might want to look at the weather channel. I was like, wait, what's happening? And it <laughs> pivoted and started moving our way. And I was like, oh shit. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. I'm going to just batten down the hatches here. And it, for like two days, three days, maybe it was like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm, I may need to reinforce my windows. It's, uh, it's getting pretty brutal. Yeah. So we were more worried about the one that was here two weeks ago, three weeks, uh, two weeks ago, whose name I've already forgotten, but my mom decided to make a surprise visit that weekend. And I tried to be like, oh, we're having a storm. You don't need to come. She's like, yeah, yeah be okay. And I'm like, I don't want to be without power. <laughs> yeah. So was in yeah. my house for three days. Yeah. Other than she came in, it was fine. It was just rainy and gross. It missed us like almost completely. Oh my God. I, I just swept through, you know, last weekend and did much more damage than Good whatever. Good one Lord. Was. Yeah. Oh man. Well, welcome to the storm talk portion of the, <laughs> the podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you said originally from the Midwest. So were you from somewhere other than, where were you originally from? Were you originally-, I'm originally from Carn city, Pennsylvania, which is like an hour and a half North of Pittsburgh. Okay. okay. 210 people. Um, when I tell people here, I'm from a small town, like they don't, they don't get what I mean by a small town. They think I mean like, oh, there's 10,000 people where you're from. I'm like, oh, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing about being down here. Like Knoxville is still like, I think the third biggest city in the state and we're in the yeah. top a hundred of biggest cities and people from other, oh, you're from that little town. I was little like, town. Yeah. I was like, no, no, no. I literally know towns where there are one light. I know mm-hmm. towns where there are zero lights. <laughs> I'm sorry. My hometown. Actually, no, we had we did have we had one blinking light. Yeah. Yeah. The corner, Apple's corner. We had a we had one blinking light. <laughs> I know places this happened in the 90s, but my where my grandma grandfather, one of the places he grew up was called Sharps Chapel, Tennessee. Mm. <laughs> and he that screams, that screams holler. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, when I tell you this story, yes. Uh, so my dad and one of the guys he works with, dad was a truck driver and one of the other truckers wanted to take my grandfather back to that area. So he, they went there, they found literally in the nineties, a general store still in existence. There was a porch and on the porch, there were four old men, Whitland, just Whitland. And, and my grand, my grandfather walked up and he said, and y'all got an extra stick. And when I'm reached down through it, to him, <laughs> he pulled the pocket knife out of his pocket and started whittling. I have that pocket knife now. So when people say Knoxville is a small town, I was like, you're no. out of your damn mind. Yeah. It's no like we have three corner in, yep. in Knoxville. Yeah. We have indoor plumbing here in <laughs> Knoxville. We got that in the two thousands. Yeah, very fancy. We're we're, we're living in high, living in high cotton. That's what we're doing. Okay, so tiny town, two hundred and ten people. Was your family from there, or mm-hmm. oh, I'm wow. related to most of that town. Like my best friend, we've been best friends for like thirty four years. Oh my um, God. I'm loosely related to her. like we can go back in our family trees and find a common denominator. <laughs> Eating was interesting because you're just cousins like it's yeah like really i gotta find out like i got who's who was your granny's granny yeah i gotta make sure that we're not related before we make out <laughs> it gets real rough wait my grandmother's side's from eastern kentucky that yeah. that rings true i understand mm-hmm. that yeah when you show up to the uh, family reunion every year and there's 150 to 200 people there uh-huh yep. and it it gets into wait now who is this how are they related yeah who's kid are you yeah yeah who's your daddy yeah (laughs) literally literally (laughs) and it it gets into the weird thing of like uh wait you're my cousin but -hmm. you're twice my age age yes what the (laughs) fuck okay okay i'm gonna need to 
think about that for a second. Okay. Uh, so you're living in that small town. Did you, did you all, I hate to ask, did you all get out of town a lot when you were young? Did you explore any or were you kind of? Um, when I was, uh, when I hit like junior high, mm -hmm. I did, I started, I'm a big musical theater kid. So I started doing like regional theater. I got, and my grandparents lived in like kind of close, but kind of far other small towns, but they were still bigger than my town. So we got to go there. Right. And um, you know, obviously going to Pittsburgh a lot yeah. as well. <laughs> Oh, I love that going into another town that's bigger than yours. They have a Walmart. Exactly. That was the thing with Butler. Butler has a Walmart. Woo! You, you go from they have a Dollar Tree to they have a Walmart. <laughs> My town did not have a Dollar Tree until. Or Dollar like, General. Dollar General. Like, well, well, we have a Dollar Tree. That's, we, we got one, I think, like five years ago. It's where the ice cream stand below my parents' house used to be. Is now. God damn it. This is all General. sounding very very southern yeah. to me very southern <laughs> it's <laughs> well and that's a funny thing about because i'm born and raised down here yeah. and you hear so many people you know being like oh y'all are rednecks and racist and all that i was like you go an hour outside of any major oh. city it's oh, awful absolutely, it's absolutely. Awful. <laughs> michigan militia i know oh southern, God, Michigan's terrible yeah <laughs> I know Southern California, like if you get outside yeah. of LA, it starts getting squirrely really damn quick. And it's yeah. greasy white people, it's greasy crackers is exactly <laughs> what it is. No offense. I know they're Ooh. your people. No, I know. I know. <laughs> that's, why I left, that's why I left as soon as I graduated high school. That's why I got the hell out of there. <laughs> you, you did musical theater. Like, wait, does this mean I can leave? I can go other places and sing leave. and dance. I can leave. Yeah. I'm in. I I, I'm, in. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I didn't even look at any in state school. I'm like, get out. Get out. <laughs> uh, so, being in that small, what did your folks do for a living? Uh, my mom's always been like a, like a manager in like a, a department store. Okay. And my dad's work construction. He's um, like a carpentry union member. Wow. Okay. So, it, it all comes naturally. There you go uh yeah. and uh, are you the only sibling do you have other no, brothers? Younger. younger okay younger. Uh, uh, one, yeah. one to pick on that's always the good my, my oh, no. oh really you know, bigger than me no we were co we're completely opposite people especially as children we spent our childhoods trying to murder each other <laughs> and yeah and he was bigger than me by the time he hit fourth grade so oh my god it didn't go well. <laughs> okay, now I gotta ask. Going. Was a uh, was sports a big thing in the town? Uh huh. Oh yeah. Okay. Of course, football. Yeah, my brother is the quarterback, and oh yeah, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania yeah. quarterback, football. like track star. Okay. Like, yeah, super popular <laughs> jock, and then me, like we're weird, squirrely <laughs> theater art kid. <laughs> uh, we, oh, we, so we get along great now, but like okay. as children, we were no see i was the only kid in my family for like 10 years so i ended up by the time everybody else started having kids and then my parents had my little sister she's 11 and a half years younger than me oh that's a spread yeah so i was just de facto babysitter and they just got, had a built-in babysitter for uh well two cousins and a sister it's like oh you, you you're just gonna watch them now you're 10 you can do this yeah, but when, when, I, when I hit 13, I became the de facto babysitter. <laughs> Even though he was bigger than you. Even though he's bigger. The first day that I was left alone with my brother, uh, babysitting him after school, I tried to get him to do his homework, and he chased me with a butcher's knife. I had to barricade. I grabbed, you know, the cordless phone off the kitchen wall and, like, barricade myself in my bedroom. I put the, put the dresser up against the door because he's outside, like, knocking down my door. And I'm calling my mom at work. And she's just like, I'm sure he doesn't mean it. And I'm like, he's got 40 pounds on me. <laughs> Woman. She's like, I'm busy. I have a work meeting. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make a sale, honey. I'm trying I'm to like, make a yeah. sale. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's a catastrophe going, going on down in juniors. I have to get back out on the floor. I'm like, I, what am I supposed to do? Oh, oh, he'll calm down. I'm sure he doesn't mean it. I'm like, he has a butcher's knife. Just, 
just throw a just throw a half chicken at him. He'll be good. He's just <laughs> pretty hungry. much. Yeah. He's pretty just much. hungry. <laughs> uh, okay, so he was. Denies first... that happened now. By the way, I've huh? brought that up. She's like that never happened. That never happened. I I have that. Uh, it's funny because I have a very weird sometimes uh, eidetic memory. And mm-hmm. I'll say stuff to my parents. I'll be like, that never happened. That never happened. I was like, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. did. Yeah, it yeah, did. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's literally a video loop running in my head. It happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe now, it's an eldest sibling thing. I don't But yeah. Uh, although I will say on the flip side, uh, I told my dad a story from when I was 14 or 15. And he added a layer to it. He remembered. Oh, well, all right and added a layer and I was like holy shit okay so I gotta tell this story really quick so my dad so I am six seven 285 pounds so I'm a big boy (laughs) I'm a big boy so and my dad is six four and at one point he was 437 big truck driver dude big beard he still has all his hair though bastard uh (laughs) but but he uh he would always tell me growing up, you know, boy, you'll never be bigger than me. Boy, you'll never be bigger. Boy, you may be bigger, bigger than me. I can still whoop your ass. Yes, yep. yes sir. But, <laughs> you know, he was never hit me, but was very tough on me as a kid. And, uh, but he always coached. He always showed up to my games, like all that. He was there, but he was coaching one time and we were playing. There were two teams from the place we were playing this place. I will spell. And uh, we were doing a scrimmage against the other team. The other team, this is going to get very country very quick or very your hometown very quick. So the other team, the main coach was a dad. And then the assistant coach was a half brother who was like 28 or 30. And then the other half brother played on the team and was 14 or 15. I think I'm doing, I need to get my whiteboard and start drawing shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Charlie Day. I'm just connected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. so we're playing, and I don't know my own size. And there's a jump ball, and the younger half brother, I try to pull it from him and accidentally pick him off his feet and throw him into a wall. And I swear to God, I did not intend to do that. <laughs> I, I was just, let's see, 15. I was probably 6'2. Six three, at two fifty two sixty, <laughs> playing against a kid who was five foot ten, a hundred and twenty five pounds, yeah. you know. <laughs> and uh, so the minute I did that, I just kind of woke up, you know, kind of, and let go of the ball and turned around, and some of my teammates high fived me. And at that point, the older half brother came over, turned me around, got in my face, and started screaming at me. And then a shadow came out of the, uh, the other side and it was my dad. And he picked that dude up, spun him around. And the, I always say the dad finger, yeah. the little knuckle out the dad yeah. finger. And he started getting And he started getting in that guy's face, which that guy was five, eight. And he was like, listen, motherfucker, you never get in my fucking boy's face and motherfucker. And just ripping it to where I think that guy pooed a little probably so i'm telling this story to my i think it was on my little sister's birthday (laughs) i'm telling my little sister my mom my dad i'm telling them this story and uh my mom and sister just like what the fuck you know (laughs) and then and then dad goes yeah you know what happened the the dad he was drunk as shit that's why he didn't do anything he was standing over side drunk as shit and I was like, oh, God, you just added an extra element no, to no. this. <laughs> I was like, good God. Okay, Dad. Thank God you remembered that. It, yeah, there were, <laughs> I've seen my dad angry a bunch of times. But when it gets to a certain level, there was one time we were playing basketball and the refs just screwed us. <laughs> and he sat us down when it was over. He said, everybody get on the damn bench. So we got on the bench and he just started. He's like boys i want to let y'all know it wasn't your fucking fault is those fucking refs and i'll fucking end them and i'll just just go turn around going off and point in the middle of everybody 
And that's one of those that could happen in 1993. That could not happen in 2021. What happened now? No, absolutely not. They no. would tase him. Yes. <laughs> for going off on the refs. But yeah, that so everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Giant dad unhinged. Yeah. Oh yeah. Snap. Uh <laughs> sorry. Another little see, this is Ramble Man. This is how it goes. No, this is great. This is how all of my conversations with everybody go. It's fine. Okay. So I will get, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of homework. I think you can find it. Uh, so recently at UT, University of Tennessee, yeah. Dan and I have been going to football games since before I can remember. Well, they, last year we got, or we got a new coach this year and new athletic director. Uh, but with what happened last year with George Floyd and stuff, it made that new AD kind of look back on what the history of Tennessee turns out Tennessee was pretty damn woke when it came to football we had like the first black quarterback in the SEC the first black player in the SEC like a lot of good benchmarks in that way yeah and one of the guys uh so they they made four statues out front of black historic black players the first black player this guy Jackie Walker who I'll get to in a second the first black quarterback, Condridge Holloway, and then T. Martin, who won. I think he was the first black quarterback to win a national national championship, SEC championship, something like that. Like it, it was crazy. Like it's it's awesome that they did it. Uh, but the guy Jackie Walker was a local guy. He went to Fulton High School with my dad and graduated with him. A uh, black man, too small to be. It, I'm, I'm hoping you know a little bit of football too small to be a linebacker but yes. he would he would destroy he would destroy <laughs> the story dad tells is uh jackie black man dealt with racism in the 60s imagine oh, that yeah, yeah <laughs> imagine that so they were playing some rural team up at fulton and uh i point at it because it's literally a mile away from my house right there um they were playing another team and the play had gone on down the field, but there was one of their players behind him that had been calling Jackie the N-word the entire game. And he came up to try and hit Jackie from behind and hurt him. Jackie turned around and forearmed him in the jaw. Yes. Not only did it remove <laughs> the mask, it yeah. unhinged the guy's jaw. And people could hear the pop from the grocery store oh. yes yes down the hill oh. good for him though <laughs> yes so that's jackie walker jackie walker's a fucking good job, jackie. so but it keeps going so he goes he gets recruited goes plays at ut again too small but he mm-hmm. like has the most receipt rece- uh interceptions for a touchdown like from the 60s he still has that record in the sec wow. i think and uh, all these are no corrections department. It's either UT or SEC. <laughs> um, let's see. Tried to go to the NFL. They tried to move him to strong safety. And the thought was his coach from UT said, if they had given him two years, he would have been one of the greatest strong safeties ever in the NFL. But they gave him one year and they're like, you're done. And they cast mm-hmm. him aside. Now, here's another reason why, maybe. So it turns out also Jackie was gay. Jackie was gay. Uh, he did not get into like the UT Hall of Fame, the SEC Hall of Fame, the NCAA Hall of Fame, until a few years ago. So like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, this woman, Betty Bean, this is the homework, wrote an article on Jackie Walker that got picked up by, it was in an alt weekly here, got oh. picked up by the New York Times. Oh. So it turns out that Jackie Walker died and they said, I, I, I know we're in 2021. I do not know the correct term. So I'm going to say plainly what he dressed as a woman. I do not know if he was transgender or if he was, I think the term at the time was cross dress. I don't, yeah, yeah I, I'm trying to be polite, but I'm also using the terms yeah. that were used in the nineties and 10 years ago versus now. Yeah. So so it turns out, you know, they wondered if Jackie did not get the recognition he got because people found out he was gay. He was gay and he was black, two strikes against him. So 
the fact that Very he well. had the fact that he has a statue at Nayland and they recognize that he was a gay black man is fucking awesome. Like that is yeah. yes, yes. And his brother was there. Fuck, I'm tearing up just thinking about it. Like his brother, <laughs> his brother was there who was, I think, a year or two older than dad. And his brother was like thanking dad because dad got like uh the head coach up there now, the athletic director, and a bunch of old Fulton people to come and be there. And we had like the biggest crowd out of all the people rep and people were alive, like Condridge Holloway and Lester McLean are alive and did not have as big a crowd as the Fulton because dad was like, No, fucking, we're yeah. showing up for Jackie. Like this is like yeah. So I can't remember I'm why I got a little in love with her dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's everybody that's yeah I, i'm trying to remember who it was i was talking to the, yeah th who i was talking to the other day and they're like i kind of like your dad a lot yeah. it's like yeah i still remember those tough times when i was a kid though those were oh, brutal. Oh, yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> those were brutal but yeah everybody <laughs> here in town loves him to death so it's kind of funny uh uh can't even I don't know remember. if everybody back home loves my dad, but they certainly know him. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's so funny. Like, uh, when I was younger, like my dad was, he was a truck driver. So he, you know, people in outskirts knew him like oh. dock workers and stuff. He had a good network and everybody knew him and everybody liked him, but now people love him because of love Facebook him. and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's so funny. It's like, dad is on Facebook. If you would have told me that in 1985 and he's posting like, good morning. It's a beautiful day. Shit. I was like, no, not dad. No, <laughs> you're out your damn mind. He ain't doing that shit. No, uh, my, my, my dad, I don't think he knows how to operate a computer at all. He can barely handle texting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird thing is him and my uncle right. uncle getting texts from them like i sent dad, dad it was dad's birthday or uh late last week and i sent him happy birthday text yeah. and it felt so weird i was like but we already had birthday dinner on sunday i saw him yesterday for the statue unveiling and the football yeah. dad i love you you're getting a text i've been around <laughs> you enough this week i was like what am i going to call you and say happy birthday Bye. all right then click <laughs> you got anything planned i already know what you got planned i already seen it on facebook i already know yeah. what you're doing like happy birthday dad yes okay small town mom worked in retail sales dad worked in construction yes. brother played sports you yes, were the I'll weird yeah so, so were you always into art as a kid? You said musical theater. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I was like drawing things I saw on Nickelodeon and like, okay, I was like four or five. Yeah, I've always, always drawn, always made things. My grandpa was also a carpenter, so I'd be in like his, his wood shop with him, like, you know, making sculptures. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> things so, I found around his, his wood shop. Did they like encourage that? Did they understand it? Like, um, my, my dad is also an artist and like, okay. which he, he will deny now. He, he, he passed the torch on to me. So he doesn't have to do that anymore. Oh my God. But like, I, I learned some of my drawing skills from him. Like I remember sitting down with him like on Saturday mornings and he would draw like, uh, like classic movie monsters. Oh, for sure. me and I would learn to draw classic movie monsters from him. And he did, um, illustrations for like local bars. Like when they did the, like their sandblasted yeah. mirrors shows he did a lot of artwork for, for local bars like that uh, but he will deny it now okay does he still like the movie mo mo movie monsters or oh yes absolutely yeah he's still okay <laughs> absolutely he loves a, a good cult a good cult movie <laughs> okay if i can find it uh i might get your address and send you something i found this little paperback of like movie monsters <laughs> that i will send you to give to your dad Cause it is, it's oh, really, cool. it's really cool. And I was like, what the hell? I don't know what this is. This is awesome. I found yeah, it some, you know, some thrift store. You know, I've got it, but it's one of those things. I was like, this is cool, but it's like, okay, this is cool. I don't, I don't know what to do with this. Like, but I, I will gladly send it. Uh, I will pass it forward. Uh, okay. So drawing. You got that from him. 
And you mentioned yeah. musical theater. So what got you into musical theater? Um, just something to do. It's starting in seventh grade. Like I said, our, our high school is junior and senior highs combined. So starting in seventh okay. grade, um, you know, there was the musical theater program that the choir and band teachers ran. And it just seemed like something fun to do. Okay. And yeah, I just, I just latched onto it. I can be overly dramatic and loud and I can dance and like wear a fun costume and I get stage makeup. That's going to make me break out in hives. Uh, yes. Sign me up. What <laughs> kind of, <laughs> what kind of productions were y'all doing? Were you doing, I, I don't even know. He said for as small as we were, Okay. okay. So I was Oliver, Annie, um, Brigadoon, which I dropped out of because fuck that show. It's so fucking terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, guys and Dolls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the classics. We, we're we're kind of conservatives. So we were not allowed to do Grease because, you know, teenage pregnancy. Even though half of our school was like knocked up at age 15. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Heaven forbid just... had a musical with a teenage pregnancy whenever I have three classmates that are in their third trimester uh we'll get uh jennifer to be the preg oh shit no she just had the kid we'll have to get uh we'll have to get uh uh aaron over here to be oh shit aaron just had her kid let's shit. go for <laughs> yeah you, your your understudies are seven months pregnant five months <laughs> pregnant three, yep. three months pregnant pretty much Okay. So, doing like regional theater in like the next town over, doing like their summer music program, and um, like their their big yeah. theater. <laughs> so, did it ever evolve into actually going into the big city, into Pit Pittsburgh? Like Pittsburgh to see shows, or to see shows, or to perform at all? I did see shows. I did. I didn't. Okay. Take it any point where I would be in like a touring company or anything okay. like that. Did you get we were, in? We were too far away for my mom to haul me to Pittsburgh for rehearsals. Like, there's no way she okay. wouldn't do that. She would gripe and try to pass me off to other theater parents when I had to go into like Butler, 25 minutes away for rehearsal. She, she wouldn't even tell your brother to put down the butcher knife. She would not. No, she would She's not. not taking you no re rehearsal. Also, good lord, you, you've got to have a fourth cousin you can that can drive you to <laughs> <laughs> drive you into Butler today. I probably did. I probably did. Uh, did you work on I, I'm thinking now like with dad and with grandfather who does woodworking mm -hmm. dad who does construction were you involved with like set design or did you get involved with that at all no 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 I just want to be pretty and wear a costume yeah. <laughs> oh my god I do lots of home repairs and stuff now but no I okay. want to okay I would, I would probably love to do like set construction these days but okay as a teenager i just wanted i wanted to be on stage and look fancy <laughs> uh, i wanted to dress as a really ugly boy oh um, my God. <laughs> that's oliver i assume that's I, oliver oh it's terrible i look oh i yeah i am not a good boy at all <laughs> i think, even, I think at 12, even at 12 a terrible boy i think hannah told me that about you i think she forewarned me <laughs> she's like she's a she's a terrible boy terrible uh, boy that sounds like something out of pinocchio like <laughs> uh okay our my, my my oldest son is 13 now and he's like my doppelganger and i'm like well you're a good boy <laughs> what did wait you we do look the, identical how did i make such a terrible boy in my my high school production of oliver twist but you look like a real boy i can't do it on the zoom but you put your fists on your hips and you're like what went wrong with me? <laughs> Why did oh, I? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Do the shaking of the fist. Yeah. Damn it! Uh, okay, art, musical theater. So when you're getting close to like graduating high school, yeah. what what were you thinking? Like, were your parents like, you need to get in the fuck out. No. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Say that again. I just wanted to get the fuck out. That's okay. That's my plan. <laughs> Were, were, were you looking at like art colleges or doing yeah. music? Okay. Yeah, I only, um, well, I knew I didn't have the chops to be a musical theater major. Okay. I'm not that kind of skilled. Um, but um, I only applied to one school and got in 
somehow. Yeah. I mean, now, oh. now having gone to that school and knowing what their selection process is, I understand that they just accept anybody that they think they can get the money from. Yeah. They're, they're... So it was not me being like, I'm so prestigious and so talented. It's they thought they could get a hundred grand from me. Yeah, there was yeah. a there was a school in the middle of Western Tennessee that recruited me very heavily, uh, something College of Art, and I was like, oh shit, I ain't got no talent. Why are they recruiting me? Yeah. And then I realized later, it's like, oh, it was like twenty twenty five thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. and that was in nineteen ninety six money yeah. uh, to go to that school. That's why. Oh damn it, I felt so. Yeah prestigious for a minute and then I felt yeah I felt so prestigious when I got into SCAD yeah. and oh uh, I, I kicked out mind you they did not get a hundred thousand dollars from me because I got my ass kicked out. <laughs> who who knew you could even get kicked out of art school yeah, I, seriously. I didn't think that was a thing you could do I feel That's like you kicked out <laughs> I feel like the only way you get kicked out is if you wore a suit to suit to class every day and you started talking about libertarian values. That'd be the only way to get kicked out of art school. Uh, I did not go that route. I will say that I didn't. That was not the route that I took, but I did get. Kicked out. And were were your parents encouraging of that, or were they like kicked out? No. No, no, no. Of going to <laughs> art school, were they like? Um. Yeah. yeah I mean, they did. They. My mom was upset that I was going so far away that i was going to georgia um yeah yeah Yeah, she saw deliverance she understood georgia (laughs) but i I mean she probably saw midnight in the garden of good and evil which was my which was the main selling point of scat to me was i was obsessed with that movie and i was like yes there you're you're making you're you're making me feel very old (laughs) (laughs) i'm going back to the 70s and you're like (laughs) Uh, no, I mean deliverance as well, but yeah, but I was yeah. very, very obsessed with Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. I've and I was like, a... yes, drag queens, murder. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I uh I've known a few people that so my main gig is graphic design, illustration, mm-hmm. social media, but I do digital marketing, website design, photography, video. My joke is I will babysit your kids if it gets me money. Um but I've known a few people in my career that have gone to SCAD. And it's funny because when I went to Savannah for the first time, I watched Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil to get ready. And then when I went to San Francisco for the first time, I watched Dirty Harry to get ready. Both of which I'm like, these are not good representations of these cities. This oh, is not. That is exactly how living in Savannah is. It, yeah it was funny because i when it's i went like <laughs> when i went it was in february and I, I i got on one of those weird tour bus i wear shorts 365 like i am yeah. always sweating yeah. at tmi and uh i was riding on one of those tour buses and i was sitting up front next to the driver and i said something about it being hot he was like i was like yeah i'm a little warm he was like no nah. No. And he and I was like, yeah, I don't do great in heat. And he was like, don't ever come here. In the, he's like, don't ever no. come here from April to September. Don't no, come here. don't do it. No, <laughs> you, will <die>. not. <laughs> you will die. You will die. It is like, like walking into a boiling pot of pea soup every morning. Yeah, which it, which thanks to global warming, thanks global warming, that's how it is here now. It used yeah. to be like a little it more would, Yeah, it would be. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> Yeah, the difference is here it's 95% humidity, there it's 120% humidity. 20%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it was I was very goth in college too, so I'm head to toe oh. black. Oh god. In and layers, layers and layers. And like hair. Yeah. Oh um, my god. In that, in, that, in that heat. Yeah. No. It's, <laughs> no. it's a <attack> will. <laughs> and I'm trying to think how it was would have been back then. Cuz it's it's grown just even a shit ton since I went and I went in like 2007, 2008. Yeah. I haven't, I, I haven't been back since like 2002, 2000, well, 2003. I haven't been back since then, but it's like grown into like more of a food scene. Like I'm trying to remember there was some crappy steak chain that was there. They had some fancy chef's yeah. name. That was like, oh, I don't know. I'm not going there. This is dog shit. Uh, 
No, the only place you need to go in Savannah for food is Vinnie Van, Vinnie Van Gogo's. Vinnie Van Gogo's. Pizza. <laughs> oh, okay. I ended up in some uh, pirate theme bar. Oh, that they, yeah, right. But no, it was fish and chips were good because the fish yeah. had been caught like the day before. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's legit. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, I need to go back down there. They're in Charleston are very cool towns, but Savannah, like, yeah. <laughs> you can only visit. You do not need to stay in either one of those. I, I, I've always said I would, I would live in Savannah full time. If yeah. I was loaded, if I had just like tons of money, I would live in Savannah. Yeah. But uh, a broke ass isn't moving back there. Anytime. We'll visit. Uh, we'll visit a, My husband's never been to a drag bar. So I would love to introduce him to some Southern Queens. Oh, uh, <laughs> if you ever want to visit Knoxville, I'll take you. Because uh, you, wh what is from here? Dolly. Oh, Dolly. There are Dolly drag queens. Of course. Throw, you can't throw a rock and not hit. Like it's, there's a club called Club XYZ that's kind of sketchy, but of course it's sketchy. Of course it's sketchy. It's yeah. the best kind of gay bar and drag bar. But my, uh, so a few friends and I smoke cigars and we call ourselves the only non douchey cigar smokers. Like we literally do it to relax. And because yeah. you sit around and bullshit and you can't work, you just sit there for it's two hours bad. and you stop. And yeah. there's nothing like in this, in the fall, a fire pit, a cigar and a beer or bourbon and your friends. It's fucking awesome. Everybody do okay. it. And, uh, but we went into Club XYZ one night because it was too cold to sit outside and smoke. And it was like one or two in the morning. And of course, we got treated great. We were just two, two dudes. I mean, it, it, nobody gave a shit. I was like, of course they don't. This place is awesome. I love this place. And it, but it was like a Tuesday night. And the bartender, he was cracking us up. And he, he loved us because he kept making fun of everybody else in there to us. That's the best kind of bartender. Yes. And, uh, and he was hooking us up with like shots and I probably shouldn't say that it's been a bunch of years. And, uh, but he, he said something to us about, it. he's like, well, thank God y'all are here on Tuesday. Cause if you were here on Friday or Saturday, you wouldn't be able to move. And I was like, oh, it gets busy in here. And he's like, oh God, it gets crazy in here. I was like, cool. <laughs> and they had shitty bar food. Like it was microwaved and it was amazing. Awesome uh, favorite. Yeah, uh, but there was a there was an old gay club here called the Carousel, and the bartender from there was sitting in there, and he had the bartender make us a couple drinks called leg spreaders, <laughs> and it was like pineapple something, pineapple juice something, and whiskey, and you could not taste the alcohol. And my buddy and I are sitting there drinking those, and my buddy was like, "I'm drunk. I can't finish this." I was like, "Give it to me." give it this pre-covid give it to me give it to me <laughs> i'm gonna finish and that guy was like how are you feeling and i looked down and because of the bar my legs were yeah. literally spread and i was like <laughs> shit it works and i pointed at him and he snot out the nose like i got him i got him but yeah but but yeah you want to show them they're not as high class as savannah but we have a a big thing here is drag brunch on like saturdays and sunday mornings yeah, that is as here in the city, but like uh, my husband sleeps in like super, super late and it's impossible to get him out of bed yeah. on the weekend. So we have not drag brunched. Okay. I haven't, I haven't done any, I haven't been to any drag show. We've been here four years and we haven't okay. not experienced any New York Queens yet. Oh, oh yeah. Well, and it's wild here because you wouldn't think it, but they sell out. They had to move to a concert venue that holds uh, 1,600 people and it yep. still sells out. Like it's, I'm I'm proud. Uh, we also have the second biggest pride festival in the country, Knoxville. Yeah. So, God damn it. This is what I don't like doing. I don't like just being a, just promoting my city on here. Cause that's, I, I can't yeah, tell you how, right. how many episodes of this. I've just sat there and be like, you need to come to Knoxville, man. It's awesome. That's New York it. doesn't need any more promotion. It's fine. <laughs> I, I'll make fun. The last time. <laughs> the last time I was in New York, we, I came up there to go, it's going to tie back to musical theater. I came up to see uh, waitress on Broadway because Sarah Bareilles was oh, performing yeah. and I am in love with her. And if she would just allow me to marry her, 
I would be a happy man. Be set. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, so my friend, a friend of mine and I, she and I drove up to New York, drove, went to that show. And after that show, we were trying to get China. She was like, all I want is Chinese food. I was like, okay. So by the time we got back to the apartment we were staying in, uh, there were, there was a doormat there. I was like, all right, man, uh, you got a menu. I want to order some Chinese food. And he looked at his watch. And he was like, it's 11 o'clock. You can't get Chinese food. And I was like, what the fuck? I know 20 different restaurants I could go to in Knoxville right now and get any kind of food I wanted. Yeah. And he was like, no. I was like, this is the city that never, I started arguing with the dude. And he was like, I think there's a diner like two blocks up. You may be able to get food. I was like, motherfucker. Yeah, this... You can get diner, you can get pizza. Uh, Jolly Bee's open pretty late. I know, I know Jolly Bee's open pretty late, but they were, they were not open when, whenever you were here, though. I was so angry. I was so angry. I was like, this is not the New York that I was sold to in the movie. My main grievance is that sometimes I'll slip into the city, um, like on a Monday or Tuesday when my kids are in school and have like lunch, like a little like museum day. Um, but a lot of the restaurants are closed on Mondays. Yeah, that's how it is down here too. I think. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no! I don't, want, I don't want dollar slices of pizza. I want a meal. Yeah. Oh yeah, the worst is I've had friends visit here and they've come on like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's like, please don't do that. I please can't take that. you to, I, I can't take you anywhere. Yeah, I'll be hungry on Monday. <laughs> yeah, I can't take you anywhere. Like all the places that I would want to take you, except for one, except for it's also yummy cafe. I would totally, but it's on the other side of town. Like I love Kim, but it's like it's like, God damn it. Okay. So wait, how old are your kiddos? Uh, 13 and 10. Okay. So Kim, it's also yummy cafe. It is gourmet grilled cheese. <laughs> it's, uh, but here's the real selling point. Best ice cream in town. Uh, her husband, who is a landscaper who does MMA fighting, makes the ice cream himself. Love it. They make like pineapple jalapeno ice cream it's the fucking, yes so kim is the best like but yeah she's open on monday <laughs> so you can go in there on monday um okay so we went up there musical theater so you go to scad how yes. many how many years were you in savannah oh just oh just one. Oh, just <laughs> one wait did you get asked not to come back for your second uh -huh. year oh yeah. wow yeah okay <laughs> God, that's hilarious. So, so what then? What were you thinking? Then? Uh, everybody else, that, everyone else that was in my like graduating class, yeah, um, has since like they pretty much all had to go back to school for other things because their degrees were useless and they couldn't find a job. Really, anything art related. Whereas, like, I get to do creative shit like twenty four seven. Right. I'm making uh, shit money, but you know, right. I, <laughs> well, I think one of my hundred thousand dollars in the hole. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, one of one of my friends. One one per person I know for sure went to SCAD. Uh, I'm trying to think how to say this without giving it away. He got hired. He got hired as a graphic designer in an in-house as an in-house mm -hmm. graphic designer for a big manufacturing company, and he just knew how to play it to where he worked his way up to where he's shifted companies two or three times to where mm -hmm. now he's like creative director at a yeah. major company. I was like. No, but you knew how to play. The, it wasn't the degree. You know how to play the system. Yeah. Yeah. Because he doesn't do design anymore. He manages. Yeah. He's a manager now. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's kind of hilarious. I was like, yeah, he went to SCAD. He's successful, but he's not successful in art. He's successful in being a manager. Yeah. That's totally, yeah. yeah. That's yep. totally di different. Yep. Okay. So, so you get uh, formally asked not to come back. So did you yeah. go back to the small town? Did you? What did you do? At um, that I stuck around SCAD for that summer. And then um, I was dating a Southern boy. So uh, I moved to Columbia, South Carolina to be with him like a big dum dum. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Columbia is not that bad. It's it's weird. It's oh, <laughs> uh, so I've got a friend that lives there that works for the University of South Carolina. And yeah. he took me to 
a pizza joint downtown that was really and it's also probably a difference in time like when i met him and went to columbia it was like 2014 or 2013 somewhere in there yeah this would have been like 2003 yeah there so yeah 2003 yeah and they've got a few really cool print shops there that are old school, like half and half. Like, yeah, I will, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. So the, they, do this, now, anyway. they did not then, but they did. Yeah, they do now. They do now. Yeah. Uh, although I am team mama's sauce down in Orlando, Florida. Nick yeah. is awesome. He's an awesome dude. So uh, shout out. When to I went there, they were still flying the Confederate flag over the Capitol building. And uh, we had, um, is it not most? Is it Maurice's? Uh, there's a bar- barbecue joint that was notorious for not allowing black people. Cool. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. In the early th- on, we are <laughs> segregating that- shitty barbecue restaurants. It's not even good. It's not like, like, no, black people don't want to come to your shitty restaurant, no. sir. No. It's terrible. No, no that's, that's my joke about uh, Nashville, you know, this hot chicken boom. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I always laugh because people are going and they're like oh i should go here it's like no no you should that's where the white people go you need to go <laughs> over here this is where the sure. black people so i i grew up on the east side and usually god that's another drinking game how many times i bring i have to explain that because i'm a big goofy ass white dude and i was like but i grew up on the black side of town where i was usually the only white guy uh yeah. there and so whenever i go to nashville i go to bolton's because when you walk into bolton's you're the only white person there. I was like, this yes. is, this is the place. Like, yeah. yeah, I was like, oh yeah, that place that you love that I can't, I won't say the name of on here. Um, it's owned by two, uh, trust fund white dudes. Yeah. Fuck that place. We don't go to that place. I can take a guess at which one that is. Yes. Yes. Uh, here, since this is an audio only, I'll do this. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've eaten there. It was good. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. It's fine. It wasn't spicy enough. No. Although. It's hot chicken hot when it's not hot. So. Hot to me. God damn. I, I'm trying not to make this. I had two short stories. So there's a barbecue place here called Sarge's. And mm-hmm. I went in there one time and I was like, hey, man, can I get the hottest of the hot? And he looked me up and down. And he's like, no. And I was like, what? I can take it. I grew up over here. Yeah. Yeah. And he is, and he went, your white boy, your white boy digestive system. That's the first time I ever got called white boy. <laughs> I was like, I get that. Yeah. Damn it. All right. So then I went to Bolton's and I'm an adult. Who is it? And I have grown folks money and I <laughs> ordered the hottest of the hot. And there was a guy about my age sitting there waiting on his to go order. And I went over to sat down and, and started eating. And all of a sudden he heard, he was like, did you not see me shaking my head at you when you turned around? I was like, no. And because I was just sitting there like, oh God, oh God, I'm going to die. Oh God. And then the hiccups start. And he was just like, yeah, oh yeah. He just walked out and like patted me on the shoulder and started shaking his head. So then I I I couldn't eat anymore. I put it all up. I, I walked out to my car and there was an older lady, older black woman there. And she was like, honey, for next time. Don't order the hottest of hot. Don't order that. Yeah. Here in Prince's, medium is probably the highest you should go. She's like, that's the highest I'll go, honey. Yeah. Like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So then I went back to Prince's and she scared me. So I ordered the medium. I was like, I can handle the hot. Medium wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, white boy. I love yeah. the white boy. I get boy. that a lot as a small white woman. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love um, halal guys in the city and we have one out here on long island too mm-hmm. and anytime i go the guys behind the counter do you want you know you want hot sauce you want white sauce and they're expecting me to be like oh drown it in the white sauce and i'm just like yeah. ah, I, I want the white sauce on the side yeah and then i want you to take the hot sauce and put it everywhere on my meal and i'm like are you sure i'm like give it to me as they, yeah. all, they always have a little like tentative like squirt <laughs> on it and i'm like no 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 no, no. keep going just give it to me and then, they, then I'll, then if, if I eat it there, like I've, I've had like the guys at the counter, like nervously at the counter, yeah, like watching me eat, like waiting for my head to explode or something. And I'll just yeah. like eat it and like just stare them down. <laughs> they are terrified of me at that hello guys now. So one of the other times I went up to New York, uh, a friend of mine from high school, we ended up in Sunset Park in Brooklyn, yeah. which is, uh, and the 
uh, my friend, God, this is going to get very Southern. Her best friend's husband and his brother were hanging out with us. Her best friend's husband and his brother were from Mexico. They were cooks up there. And, uh, one of the guys was fascinated by me, by my accent. I was like, I, I, I know guys, I, I have to read subtitles. I need subtitles. I don't have an accent that bad. He's like, you do, you do. And, uh, he, uh, took me to some Mexican deli place and he, he, I got a torta yeah. and he was like, you need to be easy. This is going to be too hot for you. And so I started eating it and he was staring at me kind of the, like yeah. that. And like then that. I took like two bites and then without breaking eye contact, I reached over and grabbed the hot sauce and just started doing dousing it. And he was just like, I, I was like, I don't understand. And I looked at him. I was like, I knew this would mean nothing to him. It'd mean something to my friend. I was like, I'm from East Knoxville, motherfucker. And just kept eating and licked the hot sauce off my fingers. And he was just like, what the fuck? And, and it, almost looking at her like, who is this guy? Why did you bring him there? He's terrifying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he doesn't play around. Uh, okay. I just grew up, my, my dad was a big hot sauce connoisseur. So we always grew up with, you know, like a shelf in the fridge that was just all these just absolutely hot sauce. insane hot sauces. Yeah. And now I, I have that. Now my, I have a whole fridge on my shelf. Shit, shelf on my fridge. There we go. We got it. We, we'll get there. <laughs> I, it's, I have this, I've, I have one of those friends that has no governor that he can take the hottest of the hot. And he and I have talked, I was like, but there gets to be a point where it's just doesn't taste good. It's too, it taste, I need it to taste good too. Right, yeah, I don't want, right. I don't want just great pain. Like it right. needs to have good flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Again, uh, we did weather talk. Now we're on to hot sauce talk on Ramble Man. Great. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm loving this. This is all my favorite things. So, and I freak people Let's out. Cause, England next. <laughs> Cause I always remember where we ended. I did yeah. the, did one of these with my buddy Hasib, and we talked about law because he's a a lawyer and he does like app development. Yeah. And so we would be talking, but he and I like to yell and cuss at one another. So we're talking. I was like, "So you're at Carnegie Mellon?" He was like, "How the fuck did you?" I was like, "I just remembered where we left off." So I remember where we left off. We're uh, Columbia, you, South Carolina, friend. You moved to Columbia. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I, I want to give you a high five. We're in you're in Columbia, <laughs> South Carolina. Uh, uh, scoffing at that Confederate flag every time you pass by. Flag, yeah. yeah. Uh, not much to report from there. We just I lived there for yeah. like a year and a half and then moved home to the very small town. Yeah. Were you still kind of throughout all this time still doing art and still like chunking away trying to figure out what you know to what? do? I, I was not like SCAD like really knocked it out of me in that year. Like yeah. I, did, I, I didn't draw for 10 years after I left SCAD. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so in that meantime, like, what were you doing just to, just to make it, just to survive? Were you waiting uh, tables? Yeah, were, you, hmm? were you waiting table? Like, I, I'm just trying to figure um, out. I, work, I worked retail. I worked retail. Okay. I worked at a photo lab, um, developing people's photos when that was a thing that people did. Um, <laughs> And I, I took, I'm working there. I took up photography. So I have a lot of uh, moody, angsty photos. Black and white. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, exactly. Black yeah. and white of all the goth friends. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Do you still have any of those photos? Oh yeah. Oh, I have, I have, I have awesome. so many photo albums. I have like two photo albums of my children and like 30 photo albums of all <laughs> my dumb friends. <laughs> See if I can. Like 20 to 24. Yeah. <laughs> Undo this. Oh my God, this thing's so heavy. These are photos from my college years and right after. I got one of those too. Yeah. Damn it. Yep. I don't know that that can support that. That's so damn heavy. No, don't, yeah, don't break it yet. Yeah. There. Uh, negatives. Negative. This first time on Ramblin' Man, negatives went flying everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, that's a problem. I keep looking at that going one of these days, I'll, I'll look through and I'll scan them. And then I find a photo like that. That's out of focus. I'm like, what? So no. Glad you that. Yeah. yeah. Thank God. I uh -huh. saved that. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> that may, some of those may end up in the fire pit. This <laughs> is like boop, boop. I'm sure they make pretty colors. Okay, so you <laughs> you're you're working in a photo lab, doing all that. You move back home at this point. Yeah, I moved back home. Yeah. Um. So what was what was the thought process there? Like, I just want to reset. I don't. Did you did you have any like guidance of like, I don't no. know. What no. Oh no, no. My entire life is just flying by the seat of my damn pants and seeing what happens. I, okay. Which is crazy. I'm a very type A person. I very much like to meticulously plan things. But at that period of my life, I was just like, what yeah. happens? Okay. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Did you get back into musical theater or anything? Not to keep harping on that, but no, because I started getting like tattooed and like unless oh. actually, the little town's gonna do a production of rent. Like I got my casting choices are extremely limited. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. No, I'm just imagining that is that would be the greatest uh production of Brigadoon ever, ever. Nobody else is tattooed. Then you walk out there and it's like, what the fuck? Just me just, Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck just happened? Yeah. Okay. So you got you got out of art. So what what kind of what wait, let's go backwards a little bit. Uh so your dad did art, but do you remember like the first thing other than something your dad did that you saw that really spoke to you something art wise? Uh -oh. Uh, oh God. Uh, I mean, anything Jim Henson. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, dark, crystal and labyrinth. And like that, that whenever I was little, like, I was like, that's my plan. Like okay. I want to do puppets. I want to, I want to do storyboards. I mean, I, I went to SCAD with the intention of um being an illustrator and doing storyboards okay uh doing yeah, like, I, wanted, I wanted to work for henson so badly as a child um, okay then he died, that kind of ruined that um, <laughs> now you say you're top a now have you always been top eight did you like look into what it would take to do that is that what kind of led you to scad or yeah okay okay after, after henson died then I, I then it was like okay i'll work for lucas i want to work for ilm okay doing storyboards okay so yeah that's why i went to scad for that but then when i got to scad and had to draw with you know people telling me what to do right and i was like oh i don't like this i no. can't i can't draw on command i can't draw what people tell me to draw i right. can't do that <laughs> it's like oh shit there goes my plan I <laughs> uh were there any other like uh kind of looking through your art like were comics or you said you mentioned nickelodeon earlier well were, were there any other influences coming from those levels too like comic books or cartoons oh uh, definitely cartoons i've never really been into comic books but okay. yeah oh my god, cartoons yeah all okay. the all of the nickelodeon <laughs> oh my god yeah. yeah uh i'm trying to think what would have been i don't know what would have been because i remember watching Although I think I was in middle school, so this is way early for you. I think when Doug and Rugrats. I you... love Doug and Rugrats and Rocco's Modern Life. Okay, that was I was too. And and Stimpy. Oh my god! I yeah, mean, right I, was, in... I was like late elementary school, middle school. Okay, because when the, when Doug, I remember when Doug and Rugrats started. I was too old to be watching them but i really enjoyed them for whatever reason yeah, I, no i was probably too old for them too but i like to this yeah. day the doug theme song is my thinking music that i like mutter out loud while i work nice. my nice. husband's coming to be like are you singing the doug theme song I'm like, yeah well i'm trying to work something out the funniest thing is for me was going from like because i am a little bit older, like liquid tv with like aeon flux oh, and flux. Yes. Beavis and Butthead going from that to Doug and Rugrats Doug's, is a oh yeah. massive jump. Yeah. It's an evil Knievel over Snake <laughs> River Canyon jump. Like that doesn't the other matter. Brennan Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life were yeah. much closer. Yes. To Aeon Flux, which I think I, I, when I, we, we've gone back with my kids and like watched some Ren and Stimpy and Rocco's Modern Life. And I'm like, what the hell was this allowed on Nickelodeon yeah. for like young children? I this remember. Is like, so subversive and like weird and perverse. Will, <laughs> the Ren and Stimpy, I remember, I think I finally stopped watching it. There was one where uh, Ren, I think it was Ren, maybe it was Stimpy, farted and turned it into a balloon. 
Dude, yes. And I was just like, what, what am I watching? Why am I watching this? What the fuck is happening? What? I don't know. I'm done. I'm out. I can't. What am I doing? I don't know. That that was it for me. It was, it was, uh, it was Powdered Toast Man and his weird nipples. Yes. What? How the fuck was that on? God. What? Why, how was this for children? Well, it's like the simple. The, the horse with like the perfect ass. Yes. Yeah. I always focused very much on butts. Yeah. So uh, really? Which might explain some things. Now, honestly, that's what I was watching as a child. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like Ren and Stimpy, Stimpy and even The Simpsons, like that you could go to that's Target yeah, yeah. in the children's department and buy right. Ren and Stimpy and Simpsons. And just here. buy it. Yeah. And just like you give it to a nine-year-old. You could just I, I don't I don't think this is for nine-year-olds. <laughs> like, no. Not at all. So I will I, I'm curious if you watch this one. So I will say when I was in high school, it was wild. Whenever like practice got rained out, I would come home and I would my grandmother would drive me home and I would watch two things. Mm-hmm. Rap City on BET. Yes. And Batman the animated series. Have you showed Batman the animated series to your kids? I feel like they've watched it on their own. Okay. It was not you, for me. You didn't like it? I didn't like I'm not I'm not, I'm not a big comic book person. I'm not. Uh, but the, I think I'm it's not the, a big superhero person. But the art, the art styling is so cool that they like Oh no, it's super cool, but it wasn't enough to draw me in to okay. make me watch an episode. Yeah. I love that they drew on black paper to make it. I was yeah. like, shit. That is awesome. brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that, but that dynamic of watching Batman, the animated series and rap city, I had to be the one person who did that, uh, comics, cartoons, art school, you're back home, you're working retail. So what was the spark that got you back into art? Uh, we're going to jump ahead a lot. Okay. Um, well, t- being, yeah. In a not great marriage. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, with two very <laughs> small children. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're literally yada 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 in well, we're entire... gonna, i mean nothing i dated some shitty people i got drunk a lot we're, we're just we're yada yada a, a right. bunch check check Tech, yeah yeah a lot of clubbing a lot of drinking we're just gonna yada yada wait, to... <laughs> wait where, where were you at at this point were you still in your hometown or where had you moved um away? so i had married my first husband and moved to erie pennsylvania with him okay okay and then um we had moved back down to my hometown we had bought a house okay um still miss that house it was a great house oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh fuck that house um and also that two- house in this housing market that house is probably 10 times what it was when you bought it the cost of it oh it's the middle it's the middle of nowhere pennsylvania no it's not <laughs> really because i looked up like west memphis arkansas and it was still expensive to live in West Memphis, Arkansas. Oh no, no, it's like it's dirt cheap still. Okay, right. it was dirt fucking cheap. Yeah, Just... we, we, we bought we bought that house for like a hundred thousand under a thousand, and it probably ended up then if it was to go back on the market. Oh okay. Uh... It's it's in a flood zone. It's in a flood. It, it oh. flooded twice, like three weeks when we lived there. Oh. Super okay. Sometimes. Small okay. Anyway. So living in this house, I have two very small children. I had like a three-year-old and how old? Like a nine-month-old? Mm-hmm. Babies. And Baby. babies, yeah. <laughs> and I just, and, and you know, not great husband and needed to do something to feel like myself. So I started doodling again. Okay. And then... um I don't know. My, my, my grandma, my paternal grandma, used to make these ornaments out of ribbon um, with her little church group. And I thought of doing that to just, just to do something with my hands, like anything with my hands. Right. And Christmas has always been a big thing for me. So I was like, let's, let's make some fucking ribbon ornaments. Why not? And so I looked up a tutorial for that. Then I was like, oh, wait, I'm broke as shit and I have no access to money. Right. Um, so I can't do ribbons, but I do have this old ass dictionary here that no one cares about. Let's see if we can adapt that into something. Okay. Okay. And, and then it just spun out of control. I made <laughs> <laughs> this one 
fucking ornament just to tool around. I had some like pretty paper I was going to use, but I was like, let's do, you know, a scrap version out of this old dictionary, you know, okay. just to test it so I'm not wasting expensive paper that I'll never be able to purchase again. Right. And then, you know, these enabling ass friends on, <laughs> on Facebook <laughs> like them and okay. uh, encouraged me to open an Etsy shop and it is spot out. I did not intend for this to be a thing, like it's right. at all. <laughs> and that was back in a time when, like, you, it was actually, it's actually fun to be on Etsy. <laughs> yes, I was trying to think of a polite way to go. You can actually put craft things on Etsy. No, you can actually put craft things on Etsy. Yeah, it was. T- it'll be ten years. Um, wow. Okay. In October now. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, I think. God, I'm gonna sell my city again. Uh, I should have a little like button I have to push. It's like <laughs> skip ahead 30 seconds of you. Uh, the number one monetary sales person on Etsy is here. Uh, pretentious glass. So yeah. he hand blows and hand makes like yeah. glass. And he has a shop in a section called the old city. And he, he said, and he built all his own equipment but his shit is like $75 for one glass for like a tumbler glass. And yeah, I'm uh, good with that. I, that is, it's hot. It's hot. You're literally playing with magma. Like, yeah. It's, I'm good with that. So the, the, so the funny <laughs> part, he bought that space and he was like, I would love to buy the space next door and put in a brewery. So he bought the space next door based on that oh. and put in a brewery and he makes okay. his own glass glasses and tap handles. And he started getting into the nerdness of glasses. And he was like, this glass is the perfect glass for a stout because it's got a wide base and you hold it. So you warm it. Like he went, I was sitting there one night with him and he was just running through why this stuff works, bringing me glasses and beer. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, this one's empty. Can we try another Another one? Yeah. (laughs) I love that. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, he, but yeah, he became, when he told me that, I was like, wait, you, you're an idiot. How'd you do that? (laughs) Like, I love picking up Matt, Uh, but uh, I was just like, no, not you. You're an idiot. (laughs) I love you, but you're an idiot. I love him to death. He's, I like picking on him. Uh, I I do not have the people skills to open any sort of retail outlets. People always ask me, do you want to open a store someday? And I was like, fuck no. Oh, uh, no, no. Occasionally I toy with the idea and then I remember. I don't like people like I, I guess I'm so exhausted by people. I love doing pop-up markets like coming back to do Cleveland Bazaar because like I love right. the other vendors I like seeing my friends and like I can handle customers for like that day or those that two right. days and that weekend. but then I have to go back to my hotel room back home and just sleep and be, <laughs> be quiet I always call that uh oh yeah once I'm done with this event I need to go home and not people for an hour people. Yeah, yeah not, not people not from see you people yeah. <laughs> for a long while. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I had one friend of mine that she started talking to me about. She was like, Yeah, you're an extrovert and all that. And I was like, No, no, I'm not. I was like, I force myself. No. I was like, there are times where you have to force yourself to yeah. be personable and all that, but it drains me. I got I gotta be yeah. done. Like yeah. I need you want to give me money. You want to be give me money. Yeah. I will be as personable and yeah. as lovely and delightful as I can possibly be. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, if you're not give me money, I'm going to go home and scream into a pillow. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. I was talking to a client earlier, and it's one of those times where it's like, I'm going to have to handhold and be super happy and, and just be like, no, don't worry about this. You're stressing about this. Let's, here's what yeah. we're going to do. This just looks like this now but I'm going to clean this up. And, but it's fine. just like, when I got done, I was just like, I, I was on a zoom and I had to unplug everything to make sure I still, I was like, okay, now did zoom quit? Okay. <laughs> like just off mic. Like I need to make a noise. Like I, I can't do this. Yeah, my, I've obviously I've remarried since the awful husband and the new husband is also, he's a creative director in house. Oh. Occasionally talk about you know having our own design firm, and but and I'm like you don't you don't want to work with me. Yeah, uh, you don't want you don't want me client facing. You know? <laughs> have you met me? You Although know? I will say 
uh, I have uh, one of my current clients. I lost out on the previous job I bid on, but I got a very nice email afterwards that said they appreciated my candor and it helped them to pick the, the person they picked because it forced, forced them to push them into doing uh, stuff that that company hadn't done. Like it, yeah. it was doing a rebrand and the company had no like PR or marketing in there. Yeah. And they're like, we see you have a lot of PR or marketing in here. It's like, yeah, wait, are you going to pay me, pay yeah. me th this amount of money, lots of money. And then just be like, okay, it's done. No, no. Broadcast that shit out. Yeah. So it kind of forced <laughs> them to do that. And they like that. The only thing reason I didn't get that is because I am a one man team that hires people to work with me. And they're like, no, we need somebody more established. You're just, you're paying their rent. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Uh, so yeah, I think you can be you. It's just <laughs> finding the clients that they're like, okay, I like that about her. <laughs> like, yeah. um, okay. So 10 years, no art. You start getting into art. You start working at the dictionary, start doing the Etsy shop. Yeah. So at that point, were you kind of like, I need to focus and make this a thing? Or were you like, oh, this I mean, is I was, I was, I was a, I was a stay at home mom. Like I wasn't working okay. at all. So it was, I, I, this has been my full-time thing, like from the get-go. Okay. No, I did not intend it to be anything. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, it let me make enough money to leave the shitty marriage. <laughs> right, right. And you know, get me and my kids out of there and... We moved, we moved back up to Erie because my ex's family was up there and it was, they were, they were on my side. Um, <laughs> wow. You know, you fucked up when you're <laughs> not, you fucked up. He fucked uh, up when yeah. his parents so were like, that was, yeah, that was a little support system up there. Yeah. I mean, it was much cheaper. It was, it was a lot cheaper for me yeah. to move up there and to me to, for me to find a rental anywhere where we were at. Okay. And, um, dated up there and then met this tall goony designer that offered to send me a font that he made the first time i met him and i was My like man. remember how you like right now this is you, great you, well no <laughs> I'm, not go, I'm not gonna go that far you know how you like my dad earlier i like your husband not enough to tell him to take his pants off because for yeah, me like, for yeah. me that might sound worse take take them pants off it turns into deliverance. Take them panties. Off. It does turn into deliverance very <laughs> rapidly. Yes. I I don't feel like I have the accent. I can dip into the accent. One the first time I was in New York, I had people like telling me down here, like, you need to be careful. You know, it's tough out there. This is like 2006. I was like, no, it's not. It's fine. I'll be fine. It's fine. So I only got hit up by one person in Times Square. And he was almost as big as me smoking yeah. a cigar and he walks up to me and he gets like right in my face and <laughs> and he just keeps on keeps on and finally i just leaned in a little bit and i went bubba i reckon we're fixing to have a problem and he just his eyes got big and i think he patted me on the chest and walked away like i scared the shit out of him and i immediately turned around and started giggling like an idiot because i was like oh i can pull redneck out of there somewhere yeah, yeah. So, Absolutely. uh, okay. Boy, that by just staying the hell out of Times Square. And apparently I look very intimidating, even though I'm like five, three, when I walk, I have my dark glasses on and I like, yeah. I know where I'm yeah, going. Yeah, you're walking. I'm I'll, not a tourist. I'm not a tourist in the city. Like I'm, I'm going the fuck where I'm going and you're going to get the hell out of my way. So I will, I will, get the hell out of my way. <laughs> that time I was up there for 10 days. And by like day three, I had the New York walk down. To where yeah. it was standing at like crosswalks and it was like before it even turned green i just start walking no. into the street just go no. and i was like oh no this is awesome this feels great like yeah. not no timidness no nothing no. uh i will say the southernness in uh the southernness in Times square worked for me a little bit yeah now i can't remember who it was that was running this 2000 i guess it's 2000 seven 2008 because somebody was running for office it was whoever the libertarian candidate was back then and there was a group of these yuppie ass dudes 
that just the <laughs> and we'll make a very uh the, i'm gonna make a very inappropriate joke and i'm gonna pre-apologize Go for it. Go for it. they 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 smelled like whiskey and rubifinol <laughs> like they 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 just uh but there was one young woman they were holding a big banner standing on the side who was probably close to my age and and walking by and i was wearing shorts and like a t-shirt in december because it's me and as i'm walking by she looks at me and she said aren't you cold and i went no ma'am nary a bit and i saw her like go oh, oh, oh like melt a little bit and the guy next to her went no i'm fine i was like come on let's go you and me are gonna go to a bar or something fuck that guy let's go let's roll i gotta get you out of here man like <laughs> we ain't doing that shit uh meanwhile okay. i bet her ass is out there in january in a in a snowstorm yeah walking through the city in a mini dress and oh, stilettos yeah. oh, yeah. those girls drive me crazy what the fuck is wrong with you yeah probably yes. where and but being like but i have i have uh fish not fish what's it called uh tights i have tights on i have tights on. i know I, i've seen girls walking like bare leg bare yeah. leg and stilettos like picking through like a snow drift yeah getting to the bottom i can't wear a coat it'll ruin a lot of my outfit i'm like and they're making fun of me for wearing shorts 20 degrees. yeah it's 20 degrees i'm gonna wear my new york city uniform of heavy black parka which I didn't, when i moved here i was like i can't wear one of those that looks yeah oh uh... <laughs> give me the north face jacket now thank you on the flip side though when i was in high school we had a guy move up here from miami and in like september he was wearing the big north face parka we're like what is wrong with you and he's like it's cold it's like 84 out there I was like, you are out of your mind. Yeah. What are you going to do when December hits? I mean, there are people here that in Long Island that it would get. Yeah, it was. It dipped down to like, I don't know, it was sixty-eight here. I don't know, sometime like last week, and there were people tromping around here on like their morning walks with like parkas on. I'm like, how? How do you make it through the winter here? There's how? a. There's a. From here, how do you live here? <laughs> southern i don't know what you call them like acting comedy troupe called it's a southern thing and they did one where it was this woman in her house and she like flipped up the calendar and it was the first day of fall so she then like she you know got rid of everything put out all of her pumpkin all that stuff it showed her doing all this work and then she fixed her she got a a sweater and a uh shit why am i blanking on it what's it called the thing that goes around your neck uh scarf good lord uh and she got her like uh hot beverage and she, it, yeah and it shows her stepping out the front door and she does that and then the yeah. camera pans to two guys walking one guy mowing and two yeah. guys walking in like tank tops and short shorts pouring with sweat and then it cuts back to her and like yeah. her hair is matted on her face i was like yeah just because it says fall doesn't mean it's fall like yeah. I mean, it's, it's like that here too we always get like you know the second the second summer yeah. usually in october we've like my we've gone trick-or-treating and my kids are like sweating in their costumes with nothing underneath them sweating in the costumes trick-or-treating and it's like 75 degrees out you know in yeah. the evening yeah we'll always yeah. have the week in october that hits 90 and then the next week it'll be 12 degrees outside yeah well yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had that. We're like one year on Halloween sweating. Next year on Halloween, Halloween snowing. canceled because it's snowing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, being a kid and it snowed on Halloween and we still went. Like oh, yeah. School was canceled that day because it snowed so much. And we're just like, I'm going to put my snowsuit on underneath this witch costume and yeah. we are going. Like, nothing is stopping us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Now I'm trying to remember. Okay. Dictionary. Hmm. handcrafted uh etsy so did it all kind of snowball from there like oh yeah it, yeah it in my second year on etsy i got like wholesale orders from uh from australia i was really big in australia for a weird huh. window in the beginning i don't know and then um oh god what the hell is a damn magazine uh, uh 
oh, some nerdy magazine online publication that I'm blanking on. Wired? No, Mind. Mm, something. I'm, I'm out. I'm out too. But they, I did wholesale for them for like two years. Um, they carried my stuff, carried my ornaments. And, um, and then a gallery, actually upstate New York, contacted me and they bought it was great for them because I was able to charge. They're, they're, they're a high end gallery, so I could charge double my normal prices. Right, right. <laughs> Wholesale for them because they were reselling them for like forty five dollars. Yeah, which bananas. Um, so I was saying, rich, I, rich although people. when I when I first started, I was selling these dumb things for ten dollars a piece. Yeah. Um, which I definitely do not need more because yeah. they. T- oh yeah. I'm actually yeah. gonna, probably going to up the prices after this wholesale season because my wholesale has again, again exploded. It's teetering on the point where I don't know if I can handle it, but we're going to do it. We're going to muscle through and not sleep for the next three months and we're going to do it. <laughs> I just had this conversation with a friend. She sent me an email that her doggy daycare prices had gone up and she lives <laughs> near me. So we have, here's another dad thing. We have Knoxville, which is south, north, east, and downtown. And then yeah. there's West Knoxville, which is the rich, rich side of town. And the doggy daycare is way deep in West Knoxville. And she's like, I can't believe they raised the prices this much. How could they do that? And I was like, because rich people want to get rid of their money. Like, that's They'll pay it. They don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we live in a very very upscale uh suburb we only afford to live here because the house from my from my in-laws oh, okay. <laughs> we do not fit in this neighborhood no. at all <laughs> oh, but that's... yeah but yeah everything here is just stupid expensive it's absolutely insane that's not that when people just throw their money here how, yeah how how far it's, away it's, it's been a weird social <laughs> how far away are you from the city long island is lost on me a little bit out on long island like we are i can drive like 20 minutes and be in queens okay why would i drive into queens is beyond me um <laughs> if i go into the city i take, I take the train it's like a 30, 35 minute train ride yeah. into independent okay i've got friends who live in jersey and a train ride for them is less than an hour mm-hmm. and i was talking to her i was like one of the times i visited i was like yeah let's go into the city and do this she's like wow we never go into the city no, they just don't. No, they like, don't. What is, what is wrong with you? You're an hour from Mecca, and you're you're ignoring that fact. They they don't like to drive even here. Like I drive like twenty minutes to a grocery store that I enjoy, where I can get everything, and the right. prices are fine. I drive twenty minutes. People think I'm out of my damn mind. Yeah. For driving yeah. twenty minutes, and it's an easy twenty minutes. Even with traffic, it's twenty minutes tops. Yeah. And they're just. Why don't you just go to King Cullen? I was like, because the prices are terrible and the selection is shitty. The store always looks dirty for some reason. I'm like, no, I'm going to drive 20 minutes to Lidl. Plus there's a great burger joint right next to yeah. it. So I'm going to go shopping. I'm going to get a burger. There's a kabasi store in the same plaza. I'm going to get some kabasi and pierogi and bring those home too. That's and awesome. No, They're like, but it's 20 minutes. I'm like, <laughs> I've got friends who live in like <laughs> Scotland and London. And I was talking to them about like, uh, driving to Nashville, Knoxville, Nashville, yeah. see a show, drive back to Knoxville. And it's like three hours, three hours and 30 minutes. Yeah. And they're like, they are that's, missing that there. they're like, that's a long way away. I was like, dude, in that time, you could be in Italy. You're out of your yeah. mind for not going to Italy. What is it's wrong so with you? fucking train that tube is so fucking expensive yeah. but it was still it just still blew my mind i was like what oh, yeah. what, is, what is wrong with you like i was like yeah. i drove well, honey, sorry, yeah. uh, i was gonna say i i just hit my five-year anniversary of working for myself i drove from knoxville to memphis just to get donuts as a reward for myself of my favorite exactly. donut shop in the world yes. and yes. then drove back we went to the UK for a honeymoon and we drove all the way around the UK. Yeah. <laughs> and I have, I have friends over there and they're like, you're out of your mind. Like, yeah. who does that? Like, yeah. I was like, it's 12 hours round yeah. trip around your entire island. I drive 12 hours to do a pop-up market in Cincinnati from here. 
Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's nothing to me. I can get I'm getting around essentially three countries, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> In yeah. Twelve hours. I I've, managed to drive to Cincinnati. In the same amount of time. Yeah, I've got friends who live in, uh, like I said, St. Augustine, Florida, and it's nine hours and forty-five minutes to their house. Yeah. And, and I'm like, yeah, I just get up one morning and drive that in a day. I oh. stop at two different Waffle Houses on my way down because yeah. why not? That's what yeah. you do. Absolutely. Uh, so now we haven't had one of these in a while. Now you have a little behind the scenes. I live on a dead end and I just saw a shirtless man riding a skateboard with a dude walking behind him. So I'm going to stand up and check this out. Please, by all means. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't see them anymore. That's not disconcerting. Yeah, my I still live in like the working class part of town and we've had some issues with like packages getting stolen and stuff. Yeah. And since I work for myself, I'm the one who's here all day. So every yeah. once in a while I'll see shit. I'm just like, mm, I don't mm, feel good about that. I might have to <laughs> throw on some shoes and go kick some ass here in a minute. Um, I'll Much keep more it. exciting. At the, at the very best, I see like the neighbors walking their dogs, the neighbors that keep their dogs away from me because I get very excited when I see their dogs. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like that. <laughs> They're like tough. I like your well, dog. Don't have your dogs then. This is on you. Yeah, yeah. This is all you your. Shouldn't fault. have a multi poo. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> You're an uh, uglier dog. <laughs> okay, so this, you meet the new guy. He's awesome. He gave you a font. He, some he gave, guys he gave give two some fonts. two. Some guys give roses. He gave me two fonts that he, he designed. Two, yes, two fonts. Awesome. Yes. And uh, so, where were you living at that point? Is I was, what, I was in Erie. Okay, in Erie. So then you move. What brought you all to Long? I, I assume his family. You said it. Yeah, he's from here. Yeah, okay. He's, yeah, he, yeah. And uh, yeah. I assume a he's job. Almost about to move here because is his longtime partner, and oh. he was about to move back here. So I caught him, snatched him up real fast before he can move back here without <laughs> being exposed to me. Um. I, I'm getting you and your fonts. And you're gonna like it. Yeah, and you're not leaving. <laughs> okay, so you <laughs> moved to Long Island, and was that kind of a? Oh, that was you for kind him of to take a job. Yeah. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say, is it a culture shock? But hell, you've lived everywhere, so it can't be that, or is it? I mean, it was because everybody in our neighborhood is very rich. Okay. And um, you know, I I'm ten years younger than most of the parents. You okay. Know, that are parents like my kids friends because he, people here have kids much later in life right right so you know, there are a few few parents that i'm around the same age as um, mm -hmm. um that are parents to like 10 year olds like my youngest um but, th but then their 10 year old their their 10 year old is their oldest child and they have you know a 10 year old a six year old a three year old yeah uh with I'm going to switch a little bit with a lot of your stuff being like handcrafted. Do you still do art for fun? Like on canvas or, uh, have you ever looked into like doing, although in long, I don't see, I don't know what long Island is a loss to me. Like, cause I was going to ask you about like public art, like is public art a thing there or is it too snooty? I mean, I mean, in some places, but I mean, you really have to like be connected and like know the right people. Okay. And I do not know the right people. I'm not very personable. And again, oh, yeah. I look how I, I look how I look living here. Right. And that's, uh, that's a no. Okay. For most, apparently I'm supposed to do like amazing art, but like look like I stepped out of a Banana Republic ad, which I don't oh, yeah. understand. I don't know how that would ever work. Uh, um, <laughs> I can, I can show you some photos from people down here that look like an Aeropostle ad. And uh, they do art, and I look at their art, and I go, "No, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, yeah. you don't. You're, you're, exactly. you're kind of plain. This is, this is a. Oh God. So you're getting into a long-standing discussion I have with Hannah. Uh, <laughs> that I, I made the joke that I am a woke dude in a boss babe world, because it is. I am swimming, oh. in a, swimming in a sea of boss babes down here, and it. Oh, hurts, I bet. And it yeah. hur hurts my brain. It yep. uh -huh. hurts my brain. And I big supporter of women. 
all that. But there are that. there are women to where I've pointed at Hannah and go, I need you to make her explain explain her to me. And she's like, I can't. She's a piece of shit. Yes. I was like, I can't. No. As long as I'm not a bad guy and I'm not no, uh, no. Mis misogynist for thinking that. No, 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 no. We hate them too. Okay. No, no. We well, we very much hate the MLM. Well, I I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I'm talking about. I'm going to point to somebody directly. Um, someone whose husband is an engineer. Uh -huh. Bought her ten thousand dollars worth of photography equipment. Oh, oh, I dealt with those working at that photo lab camera yeah. store. Oh, yeah. And, uh -huh. and was like, yeah, I'm, a, now. Yeah. I'm a wedding photographer. It's like, have you shot anything? And she looks like a model and all of her friends look like models. So that's all she shoots. And and then we were sitting at a networking meeting and she's like, oh, yeah, my husband gave me five thousand dollars to play around with a, an IRA. And I was like, that could cover my bills mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. bulk of the year. And you're yep. just playing with it. Yep. Um, th wait, I'm gonna. I'm, I, I think you'll understand this reference, and I don't know if I'll get the words right. The 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 fire. I can't flames? remember the flame. Flames at the side of my flames. Yes. Yeah. From yeah. Clue. Like <laughs> yes. I'm just sitting there. Like there's no sign. There's not enough sign in this world to get angry at that uh -huh. person. And yeah, uh -huh. it was. Uh, at 32, 33, did an unpaid internship with a production mm -hmm. company that her husband paid for her to go along to Africa for a shoot. And she was like, and they put me in the photos. It was so weird. I was like, yeah, you, you're literally a model. Yes, they did. Yeah. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's yep. a little window into, yeah, so. That is a a, a long-held discussion with Hannah between Hannah and I about. I'm sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I I'm not a he-man woman hater. It's just they can be assholes too. <laughs> like <laughs> point at people, they yeah. can be assholes too. So so yeah. So where you're you're at and you saying how you look, I completely understand. I completely understand. I just use the Aeropostle. I didn't use Banana Republic. I use Aeropostle as my. Oh, yeah. Yeah. reference uh okay so i get asked if i'm my oldest i, I, I get asked if i'm their older like my first lived here they're like oh are you the babysitter are you their older sister and i'm like no they came out of my body no i'm sorry i have refused to age <laughs> unlike you but no they are one thousand percent i think it's, I, I i had kids i had kids old for western pennsylvania yeah i yeah. i had my kids so old and married so old yeah. that my grandmother god bless her gave up on me and made me she makes the quilts or afghans whenever someone gets married or has a baby yeah and i had not achieved these by age 23 so she gave me my marriage and child quilt because she didn't think she was going to live long enough for me <laughs> to get married or have kids at 23 she's Can like i know jesus i know i know i know the good lord will send you a man when he sees fit and I was like, oh, I was like, oh, Graham, the devil's doing a real good job of that so far. And <laughs> she did not the like that. The devil's knocking it out of the park, Graham. The <laughs> devil's doing a great job. Uh, okay. she, she, did live to see me, she did live to see me get married and have children. Okay. Um, I did not okay. get a better quilt. Like the quilt I was given was made of all of her Christmas fabric scraps. <laughs> that was absolutely hideous that's hilarious it was that's... awful like she was like i just give up i give yeah. up on you and your two I... other your two other spinster cousins i give up on you three i already give I... you're 25 what are you doing why are you <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah meanwhile, like there well, there's so many fucking grandkids and so yeah. she has so many great grandkids by the time she expired i was like how oh, yeah. why do you need more how yeah. do you need more? you have like 50 yeah how we don't do you need more? <laughs> Big does your family tree need to be? <laughs> I was like, how? How about you let the three of us spinsters like alone? Like, let yeah. us, yeah, leave us be. We're good. Yeah. We're going to enjoy our lives and go on vacations together when we're older. <laughs> so I told here. I told good dad stories. I'll have I, my mom is the greatest. No offense, my mom is the greatest. <laughs> uh, I have many stories on my mom because she is the sweetest Southern lady, but she has a bite to her that is brutal. 
so I was 30. I had bought, I bought my house at 25. Uh, I'm going to knock on wood because I got, I need no, I'm self-employed. I need all the help and all the wood I can knock on. And, uh, I'm 30. I'm hanging out at my parents' house one evening. And I'm like laying on the, the love seat and my dad's in his chair, mom's sitting on the couch and, uh, something came up and dad was like, man, you got the life. You ain't got nobody telling you what to do. You, you can live in your house how you want to, if you want to, you know, just <laughs> piling it on, just picking on mom. Yeah. Just pile, he grew up with two brothers that are like one year and two years. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, picking on one another is our love language. Like <laughs> that's how, you know, yeah. so he's sitting there and just piling it on. I think mom still smoked at that point, smoking her Virginia slams and, uh, and uh, drinking Mellie yellow too. And, uh, He's sitting there just, yeah, you got the, I was like, yeah, I ain't got nobody tell me what to do. I'm, I can go to Asheville this weekend. If I, we're just piling it on. And I was 28 at the time, 29. She was like, laugh it up, big boy. When you're 30, your ass is mine. I was like, oh shit. No oh, shit. What's going to happen? Oh God. I, I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. <laughs> like immediately. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mom. Don't do it. So at 30. The day I turned 30, I got coupons for diapers in the mail. Oh, no, it gets better. And then, like, a few days later, I got an email said, thank you for signing up to match.com. I was like, I didn't sign up. Motherfucker. And I called my mom, and I was like, did, did, mom. You, did you sign me up for match.com? Yeah, honey, I just want to see what was available. Love you. Bye. Click. My mom's the best. She's the best. Like... <laughs> That is a mom power move. I love it. Yeah. The diapers and the coupons. And it was funny because a guy I worked with, him and his wife just had kids. So I was literally bringing him piles of mail. And he's like, dude, you're saving me so much money. I was like, <laughs> here's my mom. Oh, wait, here's my mom's phone number. Give her a call. Yeah. Give my mom a call. Yeah. Uh, my mom would love to help you out. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that question. So do, do you do art for fun? Do you ever do paintings or anything or is it work, work, work? Uh, it, I mean, it's mostly work, work, work. Okay. I, I occasionally get to like, occasionally I'll get hyper-focused on like a new, like crafty hobby right? or a new hobby. And I'll pick that up for like a couple of weeks and then be over it. <laughs> oh yeah. I get that. Uh, mostly it's, it's, it's a full-time a full-time thing like it's yeah. constantly coming up with stuff to refresh the catalog and researching oh, yeah. shows researching shops to carry my stuff it's a do you follow job. do you follow trends or anything you're like okay this is trendy maybe i need to do something kind of in this vein i kind of i mean uh -huh. i used when i first started out i used to do more pop culture mm -hmm. related stuff so i would i definitely followed it more than okay um but then I stopped doing pop culture stuff because i i can't deal with fandoms anymore so i just kind of I, I kind of i went back to focusing more on like literature based things uh, yeah yeah i noticed when i when i looked you up uh the reading list and i listened to your spotify playlist because i was i was trying to figure out <laughs> i was trying to figure out your name <laughs> i was i just clicked on every link like what is your name uh so i also have a weekly radio show called porch sit so anytime i see a playlist i'm like are there any songs on here I can move over to the porch sit? I think I found three or four. Uh, I have all one plan that's going to be far better than the summer one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I may have to have you on porch sitting and it, oh, it's a lot do. of fun. It's so what I do is you pick five to seven songs and we talk about those songs, mm -hmm. but I also talk to you about like, what was your first, what was the first song that made you stand up and take notice? What oh, was man. your first album and what format it was on? We talk God, about, I got answered all of this shit. We, all got, right, let's go. we got live music, but we'll save it for the radio show. This is a preview of the radio. Yeah. Um, like live music. Uh, here's one to think on. I like okay. giving this one to think on because this one came out of the pandemic. Now that we're coming out of the pandemic and do not answer this. Okay. What is your perfect pairing of if you could create a show? Perfect pairing of mu musician, band, and venue. Mm -hmm. And I don't want the answer. Uh, I almost want to give you my answer, but I also don't want to, because okay. I'm curious to what people, here's okay. something to think about. Do you want to see a band you've seen before? Would you rather see yeah. a new band? Would you want to go to a venue you've been to before? 
do you want to go to a new venue? Mine is yeah. somebody I've never seen at a venue I've never been to that is a bucket list venue. So okay. yeah, I'll have you back on the radio show. Um, um, that's a good one. Think about. These are the questions I like, because this is why I'm very bad at making friends here, because everybody here is very much like, let's do small talk. It's very superficial. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want that. Like, I want to know the first thing that made you cry. And yeah. like, oh my God. perfect. <laughs> their perfect location to be kissed. Like, I want to know like these like weird, oh like deep dive questions. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to know what your husband does. I don't give a shit what your husband does. Like, Oh my God. It's not for me. I can't no. uh, uh, know. I know your soul so I can see, steal it. See, <laughs> there's the goth mess coming out. Don't let the blonde hair fool you. The goth mess yeah. is still in there. Uh, it's funny. Cause me, it's always, when I talk to people here, it's like, are you from here? Oh, okay, you're from here. What high school do you go to? And there's some people, it's like, they are 20 years younger than you. I was like, still, I probably know somebody. Like, I, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's not that small of a town, it's still like, oh, okay, you went to Bearden around this time. Do you know Candace Brown? And they're like, no, because my class alone had 1,800 people. I was like, yeah, but it was Candace. Don't you know Candace? I don't know her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, that's what kills me is uh discovery is based here and it used to be scripts oh. networks hgtv yeah. all that and their their office is fucking mad it's bigger than college yeah. and i would ask somebody say oh, i'll work at scripts i was like oh do you know adam kennedy no art carmichael <laughs> no lava honaker no do you know anybody and they're like there's like four thousand people you leave your house yeah, I was like, there are like four thousand people. It's like that gets real southern. Yeah. Don't you, don't y'all talk over there? I don't understand. I know everybody in the day. Like yeah. I work for a company that had five hundred people. I knew everybody in the building. <laughs> like, I'm not an extrovert, but I'm just. I I am the small talker. I am the. I cannot take just standing in an elevator, and not make a joke or do something. It would drive me nuts. I don't. I don't know what makes. Me comfortable in that silence or someone want to discuss the weather with me yeah. I'm, I'm just like oh, oh, oh. no yeah. I, I just pulled something on my neck making that face just so you're aware <laughs> well that's a, a friend of mine she went to college in Virginia which is still kind of southern and I it's, was it's yeah. I, I was walking from the hotel to the gas station next door to get milk and I passed the guy I said I said how you doing I said or it said something like morning how you doing and he just kind of double take goes like all you do is say doing good you and walk away yeah. i was like that's the I southern key that. i can do that that's the southern key you don't have to i don't want a book i just want i'm doing good how about you doing good don't get any yeah. deeper than that it's all fine it's all good like if you actually go in deeper i'd probably be like wait what the fuck is wrong with you man i don't give a shit about your kids i'm like that's fine i'm good with that if i'm stuck in like a spot or if I like I occasionally well for everything mm -hmm. I would occasionally go to you know like after work meetups with Eddie yeah and like, his office and stuff and I can't I can't do like the surface level Same. conversation with that I'm like that's what then, but then, then like, when we do get deeper I end up putting my foot in my mouth and being yeah. like I gotta do a little Irish exit here and get the fuck out of this bar because no. I look like an asshole right now <laughs> no you gotta learn from George Costanza the wisdom and wit of George Costanza Costanza you make one impressionable moment then you go I'm out and walk away yeah that was one oh, one of the last dinners I went to was it was a it was a, it was a leaving party for one of his co-workers but then like his like the, in, the, 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 the sweet baby interns yeah oh okay. yeah and they're like so pure and innocent yeah and i was oh i found one was like had just turned 21 like she was at the bar for the first time she had just turned 21 and i was like technically i am if i was a teenage mom i would i would i'm technically old enough to be your mom because they're they're people that i graduated yeah. with that have 21 year olds yeah. i could be your mom and was just like drunkenly laughing about it and then like five minutes later in the conversation i was older than her mother because her mom had her when she was like 15. Oh my God. And I'm like, holy shit, I am an asshole. I'm like, I'm actually, oh I'm God. actually older than your mom. Great. I'm going to leave now. I'm going to. Oh, I, 
shuffle off to fucking Buffalo right now. <laughs> Get out of here. I, I may have you beat on that. So I did this program <laughs> called Mentor 2.0 through Big Brothers, Big Sisters, where I went like monthly and I emailed with a kid trying to kind of push him, help him with yeah. college, going entering into college and all that shit. <laughs> And I go the first year and we're talking. I was like, well, what are you into? He's like, well, I like playing guitar. It's like, cool. I was like, what bands do you like? And he rattles off like Travis Scott and, you know, rappers. It's like, yeah, those aren't bands. What <laughs> band? And he was like, well, I'm into this really old band. I don't know if oh, you no. know them called oh, no. Nirvana. And I was just like, what the fuck? I, and I just started laughing at him. Oh, and he he's a oh, tiny God. he's a tiny dude like he maybe weighs 75 pounds like he is a little bitty guy and i'm sitting on this uh cafeteria chair you know the little with the thing yeah, and yeah. I, I look like a fucking gorilla sitting on this thing i was like <laughs> i'm i looked at him i was like i will end you kid and he just he was like holy shit and i was like don't ever say really old before you say nerva and then i started thinking about it. i was like no he's right I think Nirvana has been gone longer than the Beatles were gone when I was a kid. And yeah. I would consider Beatles an old band when I was a kid. Yeah. So then what happened in year two is I finally was like, wait, how old your mom and dad? Oh God. And not only were they younger than me, mm -hmm. like his mom was like eight years younger, almost a decade. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh God, no, yeah. I don't yeah. feel old, but now I feel old. like it hurt. It hurt. There, um, I don't, it was, uh, I don't know what in the hell I was discussing with my, my best friend of 34 years. So we were just, we, we, we just shit talking people back home. Right. And we brought up one girl who was uh, questionable in high school. And then this led to some like Facebook stalking as you do. Oh, and yeah. I discovered, I mean, same graduating classes. She is also like 38 and just some Facebook stalking. And, uh, She's a grandma. Jesus. She is that that is some, that is some backwoods Western uh, people there, right there. That is, yeah. So I, I never want to hear from anybody on Long Island no. that I'm a young mother. No. Oh no, there was <laughs> a young there, there was a lady I worked with that her daughter, this is painful, was 12 and got pregnant. Oh god, I I can't. And had the baby at 13, and she oh. was happy about it. it was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a, this woman is like delighted that she yeah. is uh, having a, not just not her first, but a second grandchild yeah. at 38. <laughs> uh, I would murder my kid. I would, I have two boys, but I would murder him. <laughs> I, I'm going to say something. Another thing is very inappropriate. I wanted to say your daughter doesn't even have boobs, and she has a kid. Yeah. That's fucked up. Like that's fucked up. She's she's still a child. Like she's literally not a teenager. She's a child. What the fuck is? I, it's baffling to me. Like I I was super icked out by any sort of like affection with anybody <laughs> at that age. Like I mean I, I obviously I had like daydreams of making out with Leonard Nimoy and Michael J. Fox as you do. Okay. Um, okay. Michael J. Fox, as I understand. I did, Leonard right? Nimoy. Well, as I did. Yeah. Uh, but bo both of those childhood crushes really explain a lot about yeah. uh, who yeah. I've dated over the years, men-wise, anyway. Oh, okay. But <laughs> I thought you meant your art. And I was like, yeah. Well, I, I mean, that's probably that, too. Probably yeah. that, too. <laughs> but yeah, but the idea of like being like 12, 13 and actually like putting my face against like a boy's, it was like, oh, no. no. Like that is no. revolting. So to have. Oh God! Babies having babies is, is baffling. Is absolutely baffling to me. I'm like, oh, you wanted it's, to touch a boy? <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Okay. I can't. I can't go down. <laughs> they smell. They haven't figured out when it's appropriate to put deodorant on. Like, why? I, I still smell. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but but like teenage boy smell is. Oh yeah, is is it's different. Nasty. I remember we were hiking in Asheville a couple years ago with them and I was like what the hell is that smell I but I was think. like is it me I'm like like you know <laughs> on chimney rock like sniffing myself yeah. and, I, and then I looked over and I was like it's my kids <laughs> they have developed odor oh no <laughs> I am not prepared I was I'm I'm prepared to have 
like infants, toddlers, and I'm prepared to have like 25 year old children, um, everything in between. I am yeah, vastly unprepared for. Oh, I, I, when I went to the football game the other day, I saw a friend of mine that his son, I think is 19 or 20. And I was talking to the dad yeah, who, who is like my age or maybe yeah. a year or two older. And then his son had walked away and looked at me and waved. And I just looked at him and I did the thing where I did like the three-year-old height. Little, I, was like, yeah. I looked at his son no. and went, mm -mm, no. Mm -mm. No. and he just started laughing his ass off. He was like, yeah. I was like, I think a lot of people do this to you because <laughs> your dad still looks really young and shouldn't yeah. have a 20 year old. Like it's yeah. kind of nuts. My, my uh, 13 year old is like four inches taller than I am. Oh my God. So no signs of stopping. He's going to be very tall. Like my ex-husband, like, so he's, it's That's just going to, even, even a 10 year old has, has shoes bigger than mine. Like I, all, all of their lives, I've been looking forward to the point where we could share shoes. Right. The window was very small. <laughs> Here, it was like a month. It was like a month where I had the same size shoe as either of them. My God, it went right out the yeah. window. That's hilarious. Yeah, they, they, they gotta wear like men's size. I gotta pay like thirty dollars more now for their shoes because they're in men's sizes. Uh, I don't like this. <laughs> you're talking to the guy who wears size sixteen, so I have to special oh, yeah. order shoes online, and it's a fucking nightmare because you never but know what you're gonna get. Yeah, that's probably the big one. Yeah, the, the tall one is probably gonna be some special order and. So I will. I will. I'll, I'll give you a. Uh, Oddballshoes.com and Zappos are both awesome yeah, for big I, shoes. I, I, I use Zappos yeah. now for me just because I like shoes. But <laughs> okay, so this is going to be the weirdest segue ever. So, yeah, <laughs> do you set goals or checklists? Like, do you know what you would like to be doing in like two years, five years, ten years? Kind of. Kind of. Are there, are there places it's like, I would like to be selling in these places? Um, I, mean, I mean, yeah, for a wholesale, I definitely have like my dream shops. I already scored one of them. Nice. Um, yeah, the NYPL. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, okay, that's amazing. Yeah. They're, they're, they're boxed up behind me right now. I got it done ahead of schedule and it's ready to ship out in 15. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, yeah, that was my big, and I started doing like trade shows, doing stationary show. Oh yeah. And now that was like when I went in doing it and I was like, all right, I paid all this money for this fucking booth. Yeah. I just want to land NYPL. That's it. And I got them like my first year. And I'm like, yes. That's amazing. <laughs> Done. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, and there's still some like museums and like other like historic libraries that I'd like to land. Um, because those are like my people. Is there a different type of product you'd like to do that I would I mean I have a giant product line that people buy these goddamn ornaments. I would, and this thing is, it's very seasonal. Like people are like, that's, that's why I'm so busy right now. Cause everybody wants to order just for the holidays. And I'm like, y'all know I make like 200 other things. Right. 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 That are also book themed that y'all could buy. And I'm, I'm kind of hoping now that I'm on a new wholesale platform, that they're seeing the other things I make. And some people have been buying them and I'm like, you know, you can order these all year long so that I'm not making all of my income right. September, or December. I do have bills to pay the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seriously. Also some bookmarks or some earrings or some prints or ca cards. I have, I make so many greeting cards. <laughs> I'll order those the other eight months of the year would yeah. be amazing for me. Do you, do you produce those yourself or do you? Well, I make everything by hand. Okay. Myself. Yeah. Yeah. So even the cards, you don't, you don't get yeah. those printed or okay. Yeah. Wow. I, mean, I haven't passed when I had like one, like especially large order, um, of cards i did have them printed and i was like sweating bullets the entire time they right. were the printer like these better come back right and yeah. they did they were fine but i am i'm very much control freak with my with everything and like i mean that's my husband's like you should teach other people to make these ornaments or have some help i'm like no 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 no, no. <laughs> so i uh, hannah got to see god hannah's getting all kinds of shout outs this episode uh fine, she got to see that in me yesterday because there was a poster that I designed for an album release show for a band mm -hmm. that I wanted to do it screen printing. So yeah. I come from offset printing. So I did like shades of colors yeah. and she was like, no, that's six different colors. I was like, colors. no, it's yeah. not. I was like, yeah, I will argue this until 
I was like, Hannah, I know you can kick my ass, but I will argue until I am. And I, I started arguing like, it's amazing that offset printing figured out how to output this shit in 1960 right. something, but screen printing still can't figure out that I can't hit a button on my computer and it figures out the half tones for you. I was like, what year? What? We're in 2021. This should be figured out by now. She was like, no, you have to manually do the half tones. I was like, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> I was like, I, I was so angry. I was like, but it's 2021. Why are we doing this? Yeah, this is probably why I don't do screen printing or anything like that because I, I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so it ended up, what's funny is she was like, send it to me. I'll see if I can mess with it. I was like, no, at this point, I just need to get it done. Yeah. It's like, because we're already up against it. And uh, I said, let me figure out. So I did something. I was like, man, there's not even an easy way to just hit apply and get to work. I was like, we're in 2021. Why is this not easy? So I'm just sitting there getting angrier and angrier. And I was like, I started doing like research. I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. And it was like, do lines instead of yeah. dots to be able to, yeah. you know. And so I, and I, I did something and I sent it to her and she was like, oh yeah, that's perfect. I was like, oh, cool. That's a different kind of art style. I'm not going to do that for this because I'm done. I got to be done working on this damn right. thing. I was like, but now I know, because I told her, I was like, maybe I'll do something in the future and send it to you. And you tell me if I did this right. Do it. But yeah. the minute I sent it to her, she's like, yep, you got it. And I was like, fuck. All right. I'm still angry at this, but <laughs> But yeah, she got to, like the, I was like, I don't want to screw up my art yeah. because of this. Like, yeah. So she got to see a little bit of that, uh, fire, the fire yeah. in my head, flames. uh, flames, flames. I can't do, I can't get high enough like she does. Uh, what, so what is something that you would like to see more of in art? Is there anything you would like to see more of? Oh, man. <laughs> Do you need to go have a sandwich? Did I just fry your maybe, brain a little bit? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> let me call my kids and make, have them make me a sandwich. I went upstairs and my 10-year-old had made himself like an old man breakfast. Hell yeah. With ham and pepperoni that he found Shoot. in the fridge. You cut out. Cup, you cut out. You cut out for a second. All I heard was pep ham and pepperoni. Say that one more and time. Turkey. Turkey. Ham, oh, pepperoni, yeah. turkey sandwich, on toast and bread, and a cup of black decaf. Uh, he should have just thrown some maple syrup on it and made that a Monte Cristo. Like, yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> when he's sitting on like, like, like it's an eighty-five-year-old like retiree with his like newspaper and his weird sandwich and cup of coffee. The only thing better is if he had glasses, even though maybe he doesn't need them like this. He does like, not need them yet. Yeah. Like. He can I help, help you? Him. Can I help he you? Would. Yeah, yeah, that would, that's one hundred percent what he would do. If he had that's glasses. amazing. Okay, what would you like to? Anyway, see? more in art. Um, God, that's so good. I mean, I I love like big like street art like installations. So probably, mm -hmm. probably more public art, more publicly like accessible mm -hmm. art. I think it should be for the masses and not. I mean, obviously it should be in museums too, but it needs to be accessible. Everybody needs to be able to get right. to it. That is one good, good Lord. Here I go. Drink. <laughs> uh, I'm selling my seat. The city <laughs> and a couple of nonprofits have invested a shit ton of money in murals and public art here, yeah. which is awesome. I love it. I mean, and obviously I, we have that in Manhattan and Brooklyn and stuff, but not, not here. No one's allowed to yeah. build it here because we have an aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Jerry Seinfeld's from there. You're fine. You can do some art. You paint he's one of his like, cool. He's from like Massapequa. He's not from Rockville Center. I think he's from Massapequa. But he's from Long Island, right? Oh, yes. He is from okay. Long Island. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe Massapequa. Okay. Good somewhere, boy. somewhere out there. Yeah. Don't make me start throwing out East Tennessee names like Wartburg and La, La, La Follette or was it Louisville? So it's Louisville. funny. Knoxville. It's not mm -hmm. Knoxville. 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 Uh, pronounce this one for me M A R Y V I L L E Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. You almost got yeah. it right, Marvel. Um, but my, my aunt came down from down from Michigan. She was like, Uh, we're gonna go out to Maryville later. And dad went, I don't know where that's at. 
where wow. is and and b l o u n t uh some people pronounce it blount i was like that's blount yeah. county what the hell are you talking about blount i got into an argument with a drunk dude at a concert over there he's like no it's blount and i was like do you see how much bigger i am than you it's blunt shut the fuck up it's blunt county and i just started messing with him and his wife was like jody's about to punch him i was like i am about to punch him he's getting he's he's literally poking me in the chest over something stupid you you gotta go you need to stop yeah. drinking now you're done you're done as uh, a as a yankee in south carolina specifically columbia there is a street there that is spelled h-u-g-e-r h-u-g-e-r how would you pronounce that sir hugger no I, I got it. see that's what i went with and it would start so many arguments it is pronounced huge what mm -hmm. exactly that's exactly. an r like, not a y sir that is a huger that is that is huger that is not huge no i could i could no. say hugger hugger i mean even if you're going to go with the er as like a french pronunciation it would be huge yeah i know they ain't gonna do I'm that not shit. Huge. yeah i'm like you're wrong the huge. entire video is wrong. your entire <laughs> speech is wrong and dumb no <laughs> i need to move away from here because you don't know how to pronounce your own damn street name well, they did finally take down the Confederate flag last year, uh, but they Progress. finally took it down in 20, 2019, 2018. Progress. Progress, I guess. Jesus. I know I can't say much for my city, but Progress. it's, it's yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, we, we will end on a positive. Is there anyone, although you're, you may be too nitpicky for this, that you would like to work with? that there's or somebody that you would oh, like man. to be love your brand and i would like to make a guess but i'm gonna i would say iggy pop oh my god i fucking love iggy pop so much there you go how'd i know i would love iggy pop um it's very basic white girl of me but i i would love drew barrymore to notice me <laughs> okay at least you no no you didn't say uh, you that didn't end with kardashian so you're not basic oh. white girl no, 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 ma'am, no. Okay, Drew no. Barrymore, and you didn't say Gwyneth Paltrow, so you got respect for me. Oh, for fuck, no, fuck no, fuck yeah. no, fuck you, no. Um, Drew Barrymore, okay. I really enjoy like, or Sarah Jessica Parker, because she is very into books and the city, so. Yeah. I think that would be nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, Drew Barrymore. Yes. Drew Barrymore. Sarah Jessica Parker. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody else that posts like reading lists and stuff. Although I don't follow that many select. I, my yeah, I, don't, I, don't I don't. I don't really follow yeah. celebrity readers. So it's kind of a weird like. Eh. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of. Uh, I'm friendly with a woman in Denver, who's a huge like cosplay and corsets person named Kitty Krill that I had her on the podcast. I was like, man, she would probably love so, but she's also very type A and it's like, she would probably make it herself as opposed to buy it from you. Like, which you can respect, Good luck. but, Good but luck. yeah, but I, I, I pivoted to teaching virtually. I mean, I, I always swore I would not teach how to make the ornaments, but then I needed money during a pandemic. Yeah. So I pivoted to teaching and, um, one, I'm not a good teacher, apparently. Okay. And, but two, but people were like, this hurts. Yeah. This really hurts to make these. And uh, I was like, yeah, it does. Try making several thousand of them a year. The only reason I say that is because she decided to start drawing and immediately mm -hmm. was amazing at it. And then oh, she okay. uh, decided to get into photography and was amazing. I was like, what the ah. fuck? What kind of super serum do you have? I know you don't like superheroes, but it was it's just rude. like, I was like, what the fuck? How are you good at all this shit? Like, it, it bothered me. I was like, damn, damn, damn it all hell, woman. Damn it all hell, shaking my fist. Damn it all yeah. hell, woman. Uh, also say woman jokingly, just because it's funny. Uh, okay. Sergio Drew Barrymore. Yeah, the only we're gonna, we're gonna go like designers, probably like Jen Hewitt, because I really enjoy her surface and pattern designs. I'm, I'm lost on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh okay 
Well, I ended the last podcast by saying we're going to manifest that happening somehow. So okay. we're putting it out into the world. That, that Drew I've been more, than, more than manifesting. I, yeah, we will. Do you send packages to those people? If I had an address, I, would, I, I have scoured for places to send things to Sarah Jessica Parker and I cannot come up with anything. But Drew Barrymore <laughs> has that TV show. I bet you could send yeah, it to yeah. the studio. Oh, I, I, she was looking for like crafty people a couple years ago and I reached out and obviously heard nothing back. But that's Damn it. Try wow. again. Keep trying. Keep trying. And I applied for, um, oh God. Uh, making it. Or, making it. Making it. Yeah. Um, th- although, I mean, that would not have been a good fit for me because I am highly competitive and like nasty about it. Which I don't, which they were, which in watching the show, they were very much looking for like happy personalities and like, right. let's come back. And we left it. I lost, but it's okay. And that would not be me. But I would be sabotaging people. No, absolutely not. No. <laughs> but you would have got to meet Nick Offerman. I would have gotten to meet, which is yeah, a dream for me. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> absolutely. But then I would have immediately gotten booted from the show. Yeah. I would have met, I, I wouldn't even made it on day one. Like, I would have met Nick Offerman and he would have been like, nice to meet you. Goodbye. He would have been like, "Good day." Ooh, oof. Good day, Ooh. ma'am. Good we day, gotta, ma'am. We gotta get. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. <laughs> thank you for your time. <laughs> Walk you away. Goodbye. Oh man, yeah, uh, that's something. I've got friends who make things, and one of them's uh, goal to get one of their products to somebody was very low end. Like oh, it was no. somebody that was just like, "Oh, we can make that happen." Can, and yeah. he's like, "Wait, you can?" I was like, "Yeah." you figure out their represent, you know, and I just ran through yeah. everything and he was like, holy shit. And I was like, yeah. I was like, dude, uh, a friend and I have been talking about developing an app forever. That is a cigar based app. And when we met last time to talk about it, I was like, uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do care packages of Perfect. cigar and we're going to, and I'll do the screen printing or I'll do stamps and, and we'll build wood boxes to s- send to them. And two of them are big. One of them is Bill Burr, the comedian. One of them is Burt Crasher, the comedian. I got to give them a show. And they have mentioned what their favorite cigars are. I still have in my notes what their favorite cigars are. It's like, I never forget. I'm never going to forget because I will eventually do that. And I will send them cigars and they will like it. So don't give up. I got you. Oh, I just thought of another like dream client. Okay. That needs my stuff. And I have been pushing hard. I tag myself in her comments all the time because I'm a whore. Um, but, no, ruthless, uh, ruthless. Uh, Jenny Lawson uh, opened a new bookstore in San Antonio. Okay. Which we, were, we actually just down there last month, but it was closed the day that we were there. So I could not go. I don't know who Jenny Lawson is. Um, she's a big advocate for mental health and she is absolutely hilarious. She's written, I think, three or four books now. Okay. And I mean, she grew up in San Antonio, but like the way she describes her dad is very much how it described my dad. So okay. it's, all of her books are just very relatable to an awkward child growing up in, you know, a kind of a redneck community. <laughs> so I, I'm also going to give you, I'm going to add two names to your list. Okay. Uh, David and Amy Sedaris. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. David yeah. Sedaris drew a picture of me topless in my copy of Me Talk Pretty One Day. Holy shit. He did a book signing and he was just drawing like random doodles during the signing in people's books. And he got to me and he's like, just hold still. Like, I just, I wanted to discuss culottes with him and how much I think that I and my husband are very much like him and Hugh. Um, and then he's just like, hold still. I need to capture your essence. And he's like, he's like, I'm sorry. I've never seen tits before, but I'm guessing this is what they look like. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God. Of course he did. He's like, he's like, he's like I'm gay. I've never seen tits before, but I, and they're like, like triangles. He gave me like safety cone. Oh my God. Dress. And it's the funniest fucking thing. Yes, absolutely. I would love so to drink heavily with David Sedaris and Amy Sedaris. <laughs> I, 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 I knew of her before. And then when yeah. I got into him, I've seen him talk three or four times here yes. and he is fucking hilarious. But yeah. 
So I got, I got to show you something. So, and this is another drinking game on this show. I'm sure. Um, we, my friend Angela and I were the last two in line and he, they were being very persnickety about like, you don't touch him. You don't get a yeah. photo with him. You don't anything. Yeah. And he, he sat there and he almost didn't talk like, yeah. you know, he would talk a little bit, but it, you know, very formal. Mm -hmm. So we're the last two people I'll let Angela go before me. And he has a handler there from the Bijou. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, Angela goes up and signs. He doesn't really say anything to her. I was like, fuck, he's done for the night. But yeah. I put in my pocket this card and I looked at it and I went, as he signed. I was like, if you don't mind. And I start to reach into my pocket and he's looking at the handler like, what the fuck oh, is, this, is this how it ends? You know? And I said, I want to give you this card because I think you'll either find it hilarious or you think it's dumb. And this is the card. I love it. That's so. Perfect. I, a friend of mine told me to make these cards years ago, the yes, I am tall cards. Okay. So I showed him that card. So I had that card made. I made that card. I designed it. And, uh, in the six or seven years I've had it, I've given away four to 500 of those cards. That's how often I get asked about my height. I've only handed out willingly like that, like 10 or 12 times. And, uh, but David Sedaris sat there. And looked at that card and looked up at me and said, this is brilliant. And I was like, oh, I can die now. Like, yeah, just, oh, is that, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then he talked to me for 20 minutes about the microaggressions against the tall. He was like, you were the last oh of them. And, and as five minutes in, I was like, I'm becoming a David Sedaris story. I'm becoming a David. I can't oh. fucking believe this. I'm fucking becoming a David. Sedaris. I was <laughs> freaking the fuck out. And he was like, this is brilliant. I, I can't get over how amazing this is. Did you see this? Showing it to his handler. Oh, my God. And then he pulled out his wallet. And he's like, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put this right here. And I'm going to show it to people because this is brilliant. And I was like. This is dream. Oh, my God. Thank, thank you. Thank you. He did that. The other person that do you know, uh, you're a music person. So you might. And I know this guy's an asshole. So I'm going to pre-apologize. Okay. Mark, Mark Kozalik. Red House Painters, Sun Kill Moon. Uh, no. no. So I saw him in Asheville. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll end on this. I'll tell you. Here, I've told the story about my dad, my mom, sister. She can, she went, it's such a struggle. She went to school to learn how to paint nails. And she yeah. can do amazing art on such a tiny surface. And she doesn't do it for a living because she doesn't like being around people. And it hurts my brain. Cause I was like, you're so fucking talented at this. You got to yeah. get over that. You got to figure out a way to get over that. You're too talented. You know, people just... ask me if I do hair or if I do makeup or if I am yeah. a tattoo artist and I'm like, no, I don't like people. Yeah. It's a struggle. I'm good at all those things, but I don't like people. No. She, I could show you some of her nail art and you would be floored. Like an entire scene from Mario brothers going across the nails. Well, this will work great. Uh, she can do my nails and we won't talk to each other. <laughs> You put it, you put up a cloth in between the two of you. She yeah, won't I even know to, what you look like. Yeah, I've, I've been occasionally getting my nails done now, and it's like so uncomfortable for me. Like, yeah. I don't have time to do this myself, but like, <laughs> so very uh, nice. I don't look down on you, but I just don't want to talk. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Mark Kozalik went to see him in Asheville, got up, to, and he was playing in an old Masonic temple. And so there was no stage, it was just flat. Yeah. And so he, there's a point where I had to get up and use the bathroom and it was just fold up chairs and we were sitting right down the uh, second row. So I get up, go use the bathroom and he's doing like spoken word and all this weird shit. Yeah. And I go use the bathroom and I come back in and there's some, it's packed in there. And there's a dude standing next to me right inside the door that I did not know. And Mark was standing down front yelling at a kid, I think kind of jokingly hmm. yelling, but he's an asshole, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, he, but he's, and I looked at the dude and I was like, small talk, small talk. I can talk to a wall. I was like, hey, man, what's he yelling about? And he's like, oh, he's yelling about how everybody here wears plaid and has beards. And I'm looking at this dude and he's plaid and has a beard, has plaid on and has a beard. I have plaid on. I have a beard. Mark Kozlik is not wrong. Everybody in Asheville is beer drinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah you've been you I love, know i love Asheville. yes very plat very yeah. bearded my kind of town yes so i looked at him and i said huh i looked i was like i looked at the guy i was like 
should I walk up there now? And he was like, yeah, I want to see what happens. <laughs> Cause again, giant dude, Mark calls like is maybe six foot tall. So yeah. as I'm walking up, I walk kind of onto the stage to go around to my seat and he's sitting there yelling at this kid and he's going, yeah. And these fucking beards and this, and this, and this, holy shit. Who the fuck are you? Do you want to be my bodyguard? And I was like, <laughs> and I turned around, I reached into my wallet. He's like, I already got your money. You don't need me to hand me money. I was like, it's not fucking money. And I handed him the card and he was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. And he, really? he talked about my card for five minutes to the entire audience. And then he kept coming back to it throughout the rest of the evening. And there was even a point where he looked at me and he's like, oh I'm playing Philly tomorrow night. I'm going to do a spoken word piece on this. I was like, Fuck, why can't I drive to Philly? And then there's a point where another young man said, excuse me, Mark, in between, so, excuse me, Mark, uh, your music has meant a lot to me. I brought you some poems. If you wouldn't mind, I would just love you to have them. So he yeah. gets them and he's reading through it. And I think all he had was like a drummer with him. And he's sitting there reading through these poems. He's like, this is really good, kid. He's like, you did good with it. You need to keep up with this. That's not as good as this damn card. And he shows it to, I was like, that poor kid. Mine's a dumbass joke. And he, <laughs> but he dropped the kid's things and he was like, not as good as this card. I was like, I'm an asshole. <laughs> oh, was, you just inadvertently crushed that kid's dreams. Yeah, yeah. But it, oh, God. Those two are the funniest, I think, experiences I've ever had. They're not the funniest because the funniest is when somebody says something about my height and I literally hand them a card and just walk away to where they're like, who the fuck? And somebody's like, you don't have your contact information on there. And I looked at, I leaned into one person. No I went, that's all right. And walked away. He <laughs> just fucking started walking down the street. That's all right. You don't need to contact me. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know yeah. me. Uh, God <laughs> knows. I wonder if I search the term hashtag Yes, I am tall. If I'll find my card of people being like, who the fuck is this guy? Why did he hand me a card? Because you made a I joke. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So all that to say. That is beautiful. <laughs> Amy and David Sedaris need your products. They at least need to have a drink with me. We at least need to hang out. Wait, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. Uh, oh my God. So I was imagining like from the front and they were going to be pointing like no. that. No, 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 no. That's no. amazing. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, no, wait, wait. I brought up their names. If you're having a drink with it, I'm having a drink with it. You got to invite well, me. I will, I will drive to wherever I need to go. I drive a little All Toyota, right. Toyota Yaris. I'll get there. You'll get there. I'll get there. Get, get here and it'll be very efficient. So you, list. so people listening to Ramble Man, you heard it in hour six. Yeah. She made a pinky swear that if she ever gets <laughs> a drink with the Sedarises, I get to drink with the Sedarises. And with that, thank you for being on. This was thank awesome. You. Thank you. I really enjoyed rambling incoherently in the past <laughs> two and a half hours. For the last six, I always say exaggerate, six, seven hours. Thank six, seven you. hours, definitely six, seven hours. We're cutting this down. So it's six hours. Yeah.